I imagine it's Baba Yaga to come out from here. Well, either way, um, I like this composition. And I am here now. Oh, hello. Sorry, hello, I got started early. <laughs> Hope you're doing I'm well. I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> all good, all good. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? Good. A little bit later for you, so I'm sorry if I'm keeping you up. Oh, uh, uh, it's only 3 a.m. <laughs> Not a big deal. Normal gamer hours. Um, yeah. So yeah. Basically, Papayaga, you're the one answering the questions regarding the comps and and stuff because the players are asleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, true, but also like um, I gave a lot of um, like um. Creative control. Free hands to Mr. Mr. Sar. Okay. Sar Cohen, our main tank. So I was kind of uh, watching the game on uh, other plays. So I wasn't able to go to the Discord at that point. And, yeah. uh, Can you ask Cohen if he's, or oh, is he sleeping? I believe he is. He's on the same same time zone than we we are. So. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess if Pretty you have an answer, if not, it's fine as well. Just wondering. The dependence on the tracer break here, because I do, I did note we we played it throughout the entire map as well. Versus the widows and Yachty. Do you know if there's a, a reasoning behind that? I believe, uh, well, if I know Mr. Cohen a little bit, he wanted to play on like a uh, probably uh, corridors, maybe starting. Is this like a start? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he wanted to like a full hold inside inside the house where they are now, but you know on right, the like down middle here, lane. Or even down here. Uh, no. Oh, Where no. your mouse or, is now. Oh, right in here? With yes. the mega pack down here? Okay, yeah, yeah. And then having those opportunities to jump on a window layer or something. I that's, believe that's, that's his, that's his uh, mindset for having a Brigitte to okay. get more brawlish. Find more brawls. Okay. So, yeah. Looking yeah. at the compositions just strictly, we already have a bit of a an asymmetrical composition. So, I wanted to talk about the how the advantages change for either one side or the other. Obviously, the range advantage and consequently the poke advantage is going to favor the red team here uh, on their attack, which means we can't just hold a single angle and expect to win the double shield war, right? So, we, are, we need to make more creative plays rather than just post up our Arisa shield, shoot a bunch of damage in, hope it breaks, and then find a kill afterwards. We're still going to do the standard things of finding an Arisa pull, maybe lining up with a, a rock from Sigma, some storm arrows from Hanzo, maybe even a whip shot from Brig if she's in range and things like that. But outside of those opportunities, we have um, less staying power because they have more range damage. This means we can't stay out in the open for as long as they can. And it means we need to make more proactive plays specifically around our tracer to, to warrant this pick. What that will likely look like in most situations are forcing them to post up their shields in response to our position and then either a change of position either aggressively or defensively that opens up sight lines for the tracer compare this to if we had widow zenyatta we'd be able to anchor single sight lines better and we'd be able to threaten from safer angles from a widow maker if they're able to create creative angles and use their range and things like that where we're just trying to buy time for Widowmaker's angles. Instead, we need to buy space for Tracer to work with by either forcing the enemy to overextend or by exploiting their current position with rotations. So I'll break down what this looks like because we actually do this fairly well, but I'll break down what this looks like and how we can do it a little bit better in the future. So starting the map off, unfortunately, I know, by the way, over Discord, I can't share uh, both my pen tool and audio for the game. For whatever reason, Discord won't let me. Uh, and I really enjoy using this pen tool. So if you are watching this VOD back in the future, because I will be sending a link to this VOD on Twitch, um, you will have audio there. But unfortunately for this live review, you won't have it over Discord right now. So pretty standard positioning here. Already holding this space here with the Sigma Brigida and then holding a main angle here. I would like to see the Arisa prioritizing the high ground here, just because you can hold more space without the shield up. Uh, but other than that, this is pretty standard. Again, we're kind of just waiting for the enemy to be vulnerable to our tracer. And as long as we're waiting in a safe position that's not overexposed to this Widowmaker, not overexposed to this Hanzo player, we can bait them into a false sense of security before we try to collapse on them and find that dive opportunity for the tracer. Little bit of tightening of positioning here, I think could go a long way. There's a couple things that I think for individuals here that would pay off a lot. So one would be less reliant, being as as little reliance as possible on having this barrier up. So that means for both our Hanzo and our Arisa here, I would like to see them using the high ground rather than being on the low ground, just because you could maximize more shield health that way and maximize more uptime. And for Zoom, our Brigida player, I, there's a really cool spot right here. You can actually stand 
on this ledge uh, right here and hold your shield third person and be able to scout immediately if there's someone over here and then follow up a Sigma even quicker than a position right here. The only time we would want to stack our Brigida or our Sigma up here is if we're planning an aggressive rotation here or an aggressive drop onto the point if they're showing a lot of members here and we can force that brawl a little bit early. For now, we're kind of in that marking space territory, so we want to make sure we're getting the most out of our positions. And alongside this, I think Pixels is forced to swing a little bit wide here just because of this position on the ground, which would be safer if we could position him down here or even with the squad behind this wall and use this Arisha shield here. Worth mentioning again as well, because of this specific matchup in the double shield, it's not just the outgoing damage we need to worry about, it's where Widow might take an angle, and it's Orisa's pull timing. So what I'm worried about from this shield here isn't just that, okay, there might be more damage than we're ready for, of course we can always kite back, but what happens if the Widow the widow peaks around or over this shield from an angle like this, or what happens if the Orisa pull pulls us above this shield and we're a little bit overexposed. Those are the situations I'm worried about. And that's what we can potentially avoid with a little bit safer positioning, more reliance on natural cover like this, as well as having those little cheats for having the third person on brig and the faster development once we do find an opportunity to go aggressive. I do know I did notice for sure, like you said, your team loves to go aggressive into the brawl, and the brig definitely helps that state, but we can't just wait for it to happen. We need to make sure that we're positioned in the best way possible so that when it does happen, we have all the advantages in our favor. Just little things already. We haven't given up any advantages, and because Widow's looking for DPS shots and not trying to break shields, same thing for Hanzo over here. We're actually holding Fox space fine. Nice marking over here. This was an opportunity to push this Hanzo out. As soon as we see the Sigma, we back out of the way. We respect this space. This is exactly the opportunity that our Tracer wants to find an aggressive timing. So communication-wise, what I'd expect to be happening here is we need to talk about where both of their tanks are basically all the time. Because that's going to determine where their DPS... Uh, where did their Widow go? That's not Widow. Am I blind? Where did she go? Okay, she's backed up all the way over here. So based on where their tanks are playing... That's where we know their DPS can play safely. We see the Hanzo here playing behind the Sigma. We see the Baptiste. We'll call him a DPS for now. We see the Zen and, and Widow all the way back in Narnia. So that means this is where Tracer can find an opportunity where if Widow's trying to get over aggressive, Tracer can just delete her. If Widow's staying too far back and isolated and Tracer was maybe in an angle like this or even an angle like this, she could find those opportunities as well. But until this happens, Tracer doesn't want to show herself in the same way. So I like how passive we've been playing so far. Now that we've seen both these tanks commit, this is our moment of action. Either we do one of two things. We play for time, and we play for tracer angles. Since the Widow's backing up, and since the Zen is basically unreachable at this timing, I like what our team is basically designed to do, is an option to brawl instead. So since we see Sigma committing over here, and we know the Hanzo's here behind them, we can commit directly onto the Orisa as well. This isn't always going to guarantee a kill or anything like that. And again, our opportunity window is shorter than theirs because the longer we stay in that fight, the more damage the Zen and the Widow are going to be doing and we want to avoid that as much as we can. Um, or, of course, the, other, the opposite is true as well. We could rotate these members here or here to try and capitalize on these members extending. Anytime we see the split of resources, since we're the brawlier composition, we can try to collapse on a subset of units and basically take the numbers advantage instead of trying to continue marking space, because the longer we mark space, the longer we're sitting into Zen angles, the longer we're sitting into Widow angles. So we'll see how we adapt to this. I think we do a fairly excellent job. We respect the Sigma, we collapse onto the Orisa. This is where I would have liked to see the Tracer already cheating this way, because again, Tracer, if you're just playing into the main angle, you're not going to get the most damage, you're likely going to be shooting into shields, likely going to be shooting into fortified Orisa or things like that. And this is why we play Tracer with that movement flexibility. Even though up until this point it feels boring, you're probably waiting for something to happen for longer than you would like, this is now the perfect opportunity that you know your team is brawling. You are the one member that can be sort of flexible outside of the brawl, and you would be the perfect one to go assassinate this Widow at exactly this timing. I think we hit it anyway, we do force her out, she gets half HP. We get a successful brawl, we don't even need to think about shield health, we collapse back onto the Sigma, they 100% overextended here. We clean up the Hanzo, who's trying to make a run for our spawn, and we even clean up the Baptiste as well. Really strong brawl, and again, this was all off the back of knowing that there's Sigma and their Hanzo, but even just Sigma there being split from the Orisa, and we had an opportunity to brawl where Sigma would be catching up to the fight rather than starting with his team, was a really good advantage state from us. Well executed. Only thing I would have changed again, slightly better pre-fight setups 
oh, that's unfortunate, slightly better pre-fight setups with that scouting, and a slightly more aggressive tracer when the moment calls for it. We just cheated back a little bit, I think maybe not feeling confident that we were going to find that brawl timing. Uh, the pull here, let's see what happens exactly. So what does the enemy see from this POV? Good punish on this Baptiste, of course. Now we're setting up. Sigma shield up. Biggest thing here, um, until this, this Arisha shield is fine for a passive angle. But we just unfortunately walked like a little bit too far before without the shield up. I'm not sure what our plan here was. But basically, again, we are the Brawly team. They are the constant damage spam team. Anytime we're walking into space, it needs to be very deliberate. And Orissa's cooldown should be the most deliberate out of all of them. She has the least flexible resources. So every shield we put up, every pull or, or halt we use should have direct intentional follow-up. And if there's ever a point where we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves before the shield timing's out, a little bit ahead of ourselves before the pull timing's ready, then we should be better um, disciplined to play around those cooldowns a little bit more strictly. This is mainly unlucky, but very, very avoidable, obviously, if we just played from that shield timing, or choose not to go aggressive too quickly. In response to Arisa going down, of course, we give up a little bit of space. I think this reaction might be a little bit beyond what's required. Um, I like the idea of cutting back, especially for our Baptiste and Hanzo, maybe to take high ground here. But I think our Sigma Brig could be trying to continue holding this space. We want to give up space, yes, but we also want to threaten space in case they try to take more than is what, what is given. So with our Orisa dying here, so Orisa is dead. Of course, we can't hold here anymore, but we can still hold down here. And this Orisa right here would be the punishable one by our Sigma and Brig. Maybe our Hanzo and Baptiste could still be back here peeking back out. We know our Tracer is still over here marking this angle. This is the most threatening angle right now in terms of DPS angles for threatening this space. So as long as Tracer knows where the Widow is, knows where the Hanzo is, or at least doesn't see the Hanzo being an active threat right now, we can still contest this space. And we likely won't kill this Orisa, but what this does is gives us an, a much easier time breaking through this space. It's inc incredibly strong having even just like an inch extra here. Like if we can hold here instead of here, now we're no longer forced to bar barrel through a choke point. Now we no longer need to do a passive Orisa barrier. When Orisa gets back, we can instead do a relatively aggressive Orisa barrier and work with more space for our back line. This little bit of space given, I think, is actually what makes it almost impossible to retake this fight now, unless we have ultimates to commit. But now that we've given up this space, we're forcing ourselves through a choke point. I'll speed it up a little bit. Our Tracer unfortunately goes down late there. Again, if Tracer is here buying time for us to be vying for this space, maybe this death is more valuable, but more than anything, obviously, we need to make sure we're, we're committing. If we're hard committing to kite back, our Tracer needs to play extremely passive or needs to understand that any opportunities they find, they will 100% be so low opportunity, so lower percentage chance of success. And you can see, now that we're forced to these chokes, a pull onto Sigma, forces a shift, and unfortunately, I think he gets poked out here? I'm not sure. Yeah, there goes the final shot. And all of that could have been avoided, like I said, which is a little bit of footing still kept just past this choke point. If there's a if there's a question, how do we, like, get your attention? Oh, ah, just so interrupt me. Just tell me to shut up. And I'm, Twitch I'm here baby answer. pog. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, no, this is your time. Yeah. Feel free. Uh, your uh, you, your question earlier, why we are playing Brigitte Baptiste mm -hmm. uh, Tracer. I think we got the answer when they played in the Who's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. House. Yeah, inside here, so, this brawl was yeah. beautiful. And it was the perfect execution of the advantages your composition <laughs> offers. Yeah. But then, this, I don't want to call it lazy, but this almost like... Um, small mistake. <laughs> yeah, small mistake. It's very unlucky more than anything. But this expectance to, just because we want to fight, to be able to play the same way that they play is a yep. little bit inconsistent with what the composition does best. Again, like if we had a Widow and we were threatening here with Widow and Hanzo, if we had a Zen and we were threatening all of this damage, then yeah, we wouldn't even need to take a more aggressive angle than this and we would probably force them back even further. But because we yep. don't have those additional threats, because our Tracer's not doing anything to help this position during this moment, it almost doesn't matter that we got these kills and they're still being able to spam us out from that position. Just little things like that. Just knowing the strengths and limitations of your composition, even this in this such small uh, of a difference, is really really important. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if I know Mr. Sar uh, Sar playstyle, he wants to stack on himself, so mm -hmm. he wants to play the brawlish thingy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I think, again, like, this was a really excellent job. You did everything right up until that moment, really. Uh, little things, like I was saying, to be really nitpicky and min-max as much as you can, as well as, like, the kiting back here. Um, little things to improve your situation just leading up to the fight, but the fight itself was really well executed. That is really good point, and I actually typed it down already, so... <laughs> awesome. Uh, for sure. But, yeah, that caused us to retake that. Mm -hmm. You are correct on that. I agree. And so like, just to talk about the differences between having a Tracer versus a Widow, having a Widow here actually makes this a lot easier to retake than even having a Tracer back here, in my opinion. Uh, because Tracer can't really do much on her own, especially if she's found out by the enemy team, if she's a known threat, even against Baptiste Zen, like very vulnerable backline members. What a Widow would offer here is very easy, what I'll call like a mix-up, where it just distracts their attention more so than a Tracer would do, unless Tracer has like a Pulse Bomb or one clips the Zenyatta or something crazy like that, which I think is a something you don't want to depend on too often. Um, so the fact that we are this brawly composition and our Tracer can't be as relevant as she'd like to be means retaking the space is even harder than if we had that different composition style. But again, just knowing those strengths, knowing those limitations is all Overwatch. And then, of course, branching into how the matchup plays out and all these different things, how we play the map, all rather relevant. Widow gets a little bit ahead of herself here. Sorry, I should have asked, are there any other questions or are we good to keep going? Not not from me so far. All right, else? awesome. Going into second point there, we see a swap onto the Genji. We see the Widow feeding a little bit. We see the Sigma feeding a little bit as well. And we commit to the Brawl. This is perfect execution. And again, like this isn't necessarily hard to do, but it's really good to see this clean communication because they're doing the same thing that I was mentioning we could have done on our retake. They're trying to split their threats here. But at the same time, when they split their threats, these tanks can't help each other. And then all of a sudden, Sigma is here left in no man's land, and he immediately goes down. His cooldowns will only save him so much before he gets burned. And even though we give up the position here, because we're not dependent on Widow sightlines and not, we're not dependent on keeping Zen alive throughout a fight, it's perfectly fine to give up our position to force an advantageous fight like this. Even though we're using Lamp, taking a kill on Sigma for a Lamp usage is, I would say, 100% value. Force the Genji out. And this is a great example of our timing here. Since we're using shields so aggressively, since we're using our cooldowns like Halt so aggressively, our staying power, like I was saying before, is a lot weaker than theirs. And them committing an ultimate here is literally the probably the best thing we could have asked for, other than maybe them rolling over and dying to a team wipe. Um, because now our opportunity window was already closing. And so we're just backing out. We're waiting for our next opportunity, likely on the high ground. And we just completely ignore this ultimate. Well done. They're trying to combo this with a pull, but they're, I think, just a few seconds too late, and we stabilize no problem. Clean movement, clean rotation, clean execution so far. Looking good. The one thing from this position already I don't like, so let me go back 10 seconds. As we're taking the space back, Tracer, again, is the one member who wants to be more flexible in their position. And this is a much harder point to enact that flexibility. It's not like you can position uh, up on this high ground as the tracer and just hit this in Yada for free or things like that on second on sorry on first point here is a lot easier because everything is low ground now with high grounds i think it's really important for tracer to prioritize her pre-fight position um, at the very least she could do things like stay down here on the ground and then hit targets uh, who get spammed out or who get brawled on from the back but ideally here i think our best setup would be to have tracer starting to set up here and then if we find a brawl in this direction if the enemy team tries to match here tracer can blink across if we find a brawl here tracer could drop down we want to limit the amount of opportunities the enemy has to close the distance onto us of course but we also want to maximize our potential to collapse onto them and like i said tracer being the one flexible member of this team composition should look the most detached from the team she's of course still playing for the team's opportunities but she'll likely be playing in a more aggressive position to make sure that everyone gets the most value possible so yeah not easy especially from this position uh I'm assuming our Tracer player here is sort of wondering what they can do positionally in order to get an advantage here. And the easiest thing, of course, is to stay with the team. But I think, honestly, even staying down here on the ground would offer more opportunities for backline aggression right here. Like, even in this situation, we know their Sig is dead. We see their Zenyatta on high ground. That means his trance won't be immediately effective. A Tracer sitting down here might get hear the call that Zen is up top and then go in for a Pulse Palm, force their lamp, and then our Arissa drops on them. They've got no lamp and we can clean up a kill or at the very least force their transcendence and maybe back out of that opportunity right afterwards, knowing they don't have a Sigma. 
So this again, another opportunity where just a little bit of better pre-fight planning, knowing that we're always looking for that brawl opportunity and we can make the most out of that with an aggressive tracer position. Maybe we can engage a little bit sooner here. The bongo comes out. I would like to see a more aggressive, again, considering we're playing into this brawl win condition, I would like to see a more aggressive use of the bongo. I think the timing for the bongo is actually fantastic, but I don't think we react as aggressively as we could from the bongo. Part of that is because we just got Arisa pulled in our backline and we're staying alive. But in addition to that, I didn't see... Where was our Arisa pool? Let me go back and see, actually. Again... Oh, Mr. Star Cohen is joining in, in up here. Okay, awesome. So the pull being used up here tells me that the focus should be on the Senyata. When he drops down, we see Tracer chasing him down. This, again, seeing this split, seeing these two members completely out of the fight, this is an excellent timing to drop and brawl into them. We have abundance of resources. We can now take basically a six versus four, knowing that they are playing Widow and Genji. Their opportunities should be a lot more strict if they're not set up well. So as long as our Baptiste doesn't just run in and 1v1 the Genji, this should be a relatively simple engage here. And I would have loved to see the Arisa pull land down here and maybe even this Arisa shield drop down here when we didn't see any threats coming up here to threaten the bongo. And then maybe if there, even if there were threats, we could drop Arisa down here for our main fight zone. And then we have Sigma shield up here and then Sigma's focus down here to supplement that fight zone. Um, I was mentioning right before we got together just to my stream that these two tanks are relatively inflexible. They're relatively linear style plays. But they still and they still play towards the same win condition. But Sigma is the slightly more flexible version of Orisa. And so any linear aggression, and which I mean anytime we're looking for this brawl, anytime we're just running in a straight line, anytime it's kind of obvious what we're trying to do, Sigma will be the one plugging the gaps in that win condition, in that fight style. So if we're running at them here and we're trying to brawl, Sigma is the one covering this angle. Or if we've already used Orisa Shield and we can't cover a widow, Sigma is the one that answers to the widow threat and things like that. We also have Tracer, who can use damage uh, as a marking tool for things like Widow, things like Zenyatta as well. But Sigma would be the safer choice for using a shield in those situations as well. But like I said, with this Bongo timing, I would like to see more aggression, because otherwise we're kind of just using this Bongo to scare them off of cart, when this is exactly what we were waiting for. Waiting for their, their tanks to be split, waiting for vulnerable members to present themselves to a brawl opportunity, but we're just not seeing that opportunity right away, and it's causing us to be a little hesitant here. We do proc the dragon to cut them off. Again, this dragon would have been great. It would have been even... This dragon was great. It does kill Baptiste, but it would have been even stronger if we were rushing into them and they were forced to back into the dragon rather than just happen to back into it in terms of this Baptiste here. Make this play a little bit more guaranteed with more coordinated play. All right, our main tank is here. All right, hello. You. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing tonight? I do no way. Hello, Cohen. Uh, I'm supposed to be coming over, but uh, it's good. All right, we're yeah. just taking a look at uh, the Open Division matches here, doing a little bit of odd review. Um, so, main things for you specifically on the Orisa here. Um, since your cooldowns are so limited in terms of what they can do and how obvious kind of the value that they find, we need to play really strictly around those cooldowns. And using here, I'll just go back to this Bongo fight. Uh, using this Bongo as an example. I'll go back to right where it started. The timing of this bongo and the timing of the shield and this pull, if we're not instantly getting value out of these resources, we should be trying to coordinate them a little bit better. And this to me looks like a very safe bongo, when in reality, this is an opportunity to go extremely aggressive, seeing both the Zenyatta and the Sigma split from the team and finding an opportunity to even like throw your shield down on cart, drop and start brawling right away. Bongo is just another excuse to go even more aggressive. Um, I guess slightly for a micro note as well, having your bongo like right here on the corner is probably one of the best positions you can ever get for it. No one over here will, will contest it until they round this corner and the sight lines down here don't really allow for it as well as it'll hit people down on the ground for the damage boost. Um, but biggest thing here, because our composition, we're not playing dive, we're not playing brawl, we don't have a speed boost, anything like that. The limited nature of our resources on Orisa need to be capitalized on almost immediately Otherwise, we're a little bit too obvious with how we're playing. And I think this is safer than we needed it to be. And I think the kill on Baptiste was not necessarily lucky, but it wasn't something we forced. It's just something our Hanzo found during the fight. 
But then we do find the Brawl. The Orisa goes down. This is a nice collapse from our Sigma and Tracer. Again, seeing that little bit of flexibility, even though Sigma's playing into the exact same fight zone as our Orisa, having that flexibility to deny more space, get more spam angles is really, really good. Again, talking about pre-fight setups here. Now we see the Tracer on the ground. I like this a lot, waiting for that Widow to peek out, or now a Hanzo as we're seeing. Um, but again, I think the best and most flexible option since teams are so likely to play up here, and since they do still have the spam advantage, they can very safely force us out of this position with more damage on their end. I would like to see the Tracer playing up here, ready for that capitalization. So we would do things like bait their attention up here, just like we did on first point. We bait their tanks to getting an aggressive play. Ah, we use our tank's so resources to seems. match their position and keep them in place for a little bit longer. This buys time for our Baptiste and Hanzo to do healing and to do damage. And then our Tracer finds an opportunity that relieves that pressure, forces some of them to turn around, and then our set of resources can push into them. That's what we would wait to use our pull from Orisa. That's where we would use maybe even like a Sigma Flux to go a little bit early, maybe even a Rally or Baptiste window to go a little bit early. But since their composition inherently has more ranged damage to it, It'll break our shields a little bit faster. They can very safely force us out of position here just with a six-man rotation. So we need to be ready for that, and we need to have a way to capitalize on that rotation. And Tracer is the, definitely the best bet, but also ultimate plays work just fine. So we'll see how we deal with this. They commit the Sigma ultimate. Small thing, super, super small. And I don't even know if I should say this. It's so small. Um, I don't know if Zoom is here, our Brigida player, but just a small note for Rally during this. It's such a weird interaction, but Rally actually makes Sigma Ultimate do more damage um, because of the fact wow. the nature of it increasing your maximum HP with the armor. It actually makes you take additional damage, and since it will only reduce 5 damage with Overwatch 1 armor, as opposed to 30% in Overwatch 2, which is insane now, um, you'll actually take more damage, and everyone getting the Rally buff will actually take slightly more damage. Unless you've only got like 1 or 2 armor proc'd, you want to save this Rally to right before you hit the ground. You want to start ticking that right back up right as you're about to take the damage because the more armor you have, the more damage you'll take. It's a really weird interaction. It used to be way worse when uh, Brigida packs used to give bonus armor because it would instantly trigger your max HP to go like up by 75 or whatever it was. And then you would take it would sometimes accidentally kill your teammates by trying to heal them. It was very silly. Ooh, okay. So unfortunately, we do try to get aggressive a little, just a touch too early here. So this is a really important um, communication moment, I think. Uh, this reminds me of a lot of situations in GOATS where you feel like your team has the advantage, but one person steps just slightly too aggressively here, in this case our Brigida, and ends up going down, giving up that advantage team. We're absolutely correct that we have advantage right now. And it is our job to push into them with this rally value. And we're likely calling that we can Sigma Flex as well and instantly win this team fight, or at the very least, win even if they transcendence kind of thing. Um, again, this would be the perfect opportunity for Tracer to look for like a double blink here to maybe even force an early transcendence with a pulse bomb, maybe force a Baptiste Lamp to make sure that the Sigma Flex finds more value. Little things like that to continue adding value. I will say for your Tracer player, if this is a situation you find yourself in, this would be your best route back into this fight, just to be there as quickly as possible and find as much damage in the mid-fight. It matters less that you're there right as the fight begins, but more to be there to clean it up, as Tracer in this case. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely a very aggressive window, but for Zoom specifically, you are not the aggressor. Reminder, we have very limited resources. If we're not ready to put up a deep Orisa shield, if we're not ready to hit a pull right now, it's not up to Brigida to, de to determine that we're ready to fight as a team. This comes down to... Sigma and Orisa primarily. If we're able to put a deep shield from Sigma, if we're able to walk up with Fortify, if we're able to hit a pull and enable that aggression, great. But if not, Brigida is not the one that enables this aggression. We saw this a ton in GOATS meta as well because at the beginning of GOATS, uh, you could do things like bash through a Reinhardt shield uh, and just cause him to hit the ground, <laughs> which was absurd. Don't, don't but, say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was nightmare territory. Brigida no longer is the raid boss that she once was, um, so her trying to initiate the fight here is very, very dangerous. She's likely calling for the fight to start here. If I'm from Zoom's POV, I know Rally's ticking. I know we're all healthy post, uh, Sigma Flux. We want to get aggressive, but Zoom cannot be the first one to get aggressive. We need to rely on our other resources because this is very much, I mean, in this case, it's actually a six versus five brawl because our tracer isn't relevant yet. So even more so there, we need to rely on the very predictable and somewhat limited resources of our tanks to come up. And even if you're all communicating that you want to push up, we need to be able to see those resources in front of our faces before we expect them to land there. 
and we were literally just seconds away from our Sigma Flux finding value as well. So a little bit of the even... overaggression, unfortunately. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I think even if we were, first of all, I, I, I'm pretty sure uh, we were supposed to engage with the uh, rally there, like uh, on the plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he was looking for that. But uh, even if we were like fully ready to engage, like um, we, we we really don't want to go too deep with that rally because we know they're gonna transit. Yeah, so absolutely. So we just kind of we just kind of hold our space right now. And shit. Yeah, so and I again, think that pushes like unnecessary either way. I think a good thing to remember, even with this like hard brawl initiation here, it's never going to be a situation where we're guaranteed to win, especially with ultimates on the table or even with just Baptiste Lamp on the table, right? So even calling for like the aggressive play here, we still need to play like it could go wrong. So committing the rally was very, very good. Calling to go aggressive, very, very good. But again, just waiting just that split second to see if they trance the Sigma Flux, to see if our shields go down, like our, our Arista shield went down immediately, and then re being able to react to those things was just that slight misstep uh, from our gate player. And I, I know this gets mixed up in communication all the time. The biggest thing I would say for this composition, be more strict about um, your tanks being the ones to aggress versus anyone else. Arguably, you could say Tracer could get in early, but again, that's on Tracer to outplay the enemy more than it is on anything else. And Brigida doesn't really have the tools that Tracer has to outplay the enemy here. But yeah, really good notes for sure. We do make a really clean rotation here. Um, post enemy trance. Unfortunately, we are still very, very low HP with no, no longer having a rally available. Our lamp is about to go down, I believe. This is likely going to result in a team wipe, but we got a few ultimates out, most, most notably the trance, of course. And we unfortunately got nowhere to go from there. Anytime we do make these mid-fight rotations, the ideal situation is as we're kiting aggression, so as we're kiting this aggression from the trance, we're able to capitalize on aggression somewhere else. That's the ideal situation. Given how small this fight zone is, given how limited our access to the enemy backline is, that's no longer a possibility. So one of two things is likely to happen. Either we're going to kite out, not find value, and then they're just going to chase us down. Or if we're lucky, or if we play extremely well, or I guess conversely, if the enemy plays extremely bad, they'll overextend while chasing us. They might even split up while chasing us, and we can turn a losing situation to do a winning situation. This is seen all the time in the Overwatch League as well at pro level play. So it's not a super uncommon situation, but the key here is to play your life. So everyone kiting here, unless we have, unless like the enemy Hanzo was down here and we we're able to five man rush him with who we have left, and then we can equalize immediately. We need to play the longer game here and we need to draw as much out of them as possible, both in terms of resources, the transcendence, the shields, the healing, the, the Baptiste lamp, whatever it is, and then also try to draw out their positions. That's how people like Tracer and Hanzo will be able to maybe get a lucky kill or maybe isolate someone in a 2v1 where we can potentially turn the fight from there. But since we don't have this initial immediate value from this rotation, we need to play a little bit longer here. What were you going to say? Sorry. Uh, so we could just... As soon as we get down there, uh, I think I was kind of tunnel visioned on putting these uh, the Hanzo and Xenophagon, on. But instead of uh, staying around and trying to fight that, we could have just backed all of us up into that hallway and maybe they try to chase us down the hallway and we get some picks. Yeah, exactly. The biggest thing is not hitting like an invisible wall right here. We're turning here and yeah. we're almost like trying to turn right away, especially with our Baptiste lamp being used. When the I think the correct answer would have been to kite everyone here, maybe even go into first point kind of thing and bait them into going into the payload and then re-aggressing if they don't all commit yeah. into the same space. Or maybe we have our Hanzo, like if he's able to get up into a position like this. So if they're able to try and chase him down or even our Tracer into a position uh, like this or on the Mega so that if they all commit to chasing our rotation, that 1v1 happens in Tracer's favor. She finds a pulse bomb late into the fight, and then we can come back in. But because we don't have an immediate win condition, and we don't have an immediate target with this rotation, this is a purely defensive rotation. In other words, we need to wait until at the very least our resources are in our favor. So we have our next shield coming up, we have uh, whatever, an ultimate to use or things like that. Or we need to wait until we force them into uh, bad positions, which will come from either them overextending during the chase, so it needs to be a long chase, or from them splitting up during the chase into different targets based on positions. Very, very hard to do, and this is not something that can really come from communication alone in the moment. Unfortunately, this needs to be almost instinctual in these moments. The only calm I would expect in these situations is be like kite aggressively kind of thing, where you're still trying to maintain space pressure and you're trying to tell your DPS that this is still winnable kind of thing, but you're not trying to coordinate necessary things because it very much depends on how the enemy chases you down and then you're able to react off that situation. 
this is not an area where we can force a proactive play. We need to wait to see how the situation unfolds and then hope for the best. But that being said, like even something like this, like your Hanzo cutting this way, and then Sigma chasing your Hanzo instead of helping find space for your Genji. And then if we're lucky, like Orisa and Sigma find a, a pull rock under the Genji, maybe we just kill Genji out of nowhere and then we're able to stabilize from there. But they play well. We don't find that opportunity, unfortunately. And oh, they man. capitalize on us. I, well, if we all got there, we could fuck me. <laughs> it's, it's so could've easy looking back, back at it, right? Could've went back that whole way. Could've went back that whole way instead of pulling them off the high ground. Mm -hmm. the one. Yeah, if we, if we had Dope pulled with that shield, yeah, we pulled the Genji, like I said, or even like having a defensive shield here with a better angle, like little, little, little things can make the biggest difference in those situations. But again, understandable. And in the moment, you have to react with what you think the situation is. When we're looking back like this, it's, it's easy to look at the chessboard from above and understand what moves ah, you have available. So it's a lot harder in game. So again, biggest moments here to recognize and apply to the next time you're scrimming, next time you're in match is recognize when you are at heavy disadvantage and recognize if you have an opportunity to immediately what I'll call, um, oh man, I'm forgetting the word now. I have a word for it. <laughs> um, equalize. You can either immediately equalize advantage. So if your brig goes down, you can immediately equalize somewhere else. Just because they have advantage here doesn't mean we can't push. We can't push an advantage somewhere else. If you're not able to immediately equalize, if this situation doesn't favor you in any way, you need to draw out the fight, both in terms of letting their resources die out, letting the transcend, for example. Maybe that forces another resource, and that's, even if you don't win then, you're at least forcing another ultimate, which we got from this bongo, not bad. Um, or you're forcing their positions to be misguided, and then we can capitalize on that. Very, very tough stuff. This is something that, again, even Overwatch League teams struggle with. The only team I'm able to see uh, in the league even now do this consistently would be the San Francisco Shock. Sometimes the Shanghai Dragons as well. These are, again, top-level teams are, only, are the only so ones in the world teams. able to do this consistently. But the concept still, still applies, and you can try to apply some of the base fundamentals of this by just, again, prioritizing the length of the fight here, and that opportunity to turn might come as you lengthen the fight. Make sense? Uh, yeah. Well. All right. Now we're in a retake situation. Never a fun time. But we did draw some pretty big ultimates out. Like I said, we still have Pulse Bomb, and we have our Baptiste window. Decent ultimates for finding space. Just some notes here for this composition in general. Since they're kind of closer to our composition, now they have a Genji instead of a Tracer, I disagree with their positioning almost entirely. Um, because they should be setting up for their Genji to find opportunities, they shouldn't be stacked so linearly here. I think the best thing that they could do would be have their Orisa here, maybe even uh, have their Sigma on card or something, but have Sigma slightly split to be able to uh, amplify or augment uh, Orisa's position by either being able to hit the targets to try to commit onto Orisa, or by able to, again, equalize pressure if everything goes into Orisa, or if needed, Orisa can kite back into the same space that Sigma can kite back into. Um, but basically, the enemy team wants to draw out the fight, wants to draw you guys out of these choke points wherever you decide to come from, so that Genji can find an opportunity into the back line and find those aggressive opportunities himself. They're playing as if they still have the same comp as before, and they can just throw damage in one direction and win the fight. They do have their Zen on an off angle at least, which is nice. And because they're stacked up here, and because Orisa kites forward instead of backwards, we absolutely shred her <laughs> through the Baptiste window here, so nice play. This is an example of, again, even though compositionally we have technically less forward-facing damage because of both their positions and because we have an ultimate that they don't have to use, we absolutely obliterate them. So this kind of gets me into a side concept of how do any compositions create space in Overwatch, and it's one of two ways. Every single composition in the game, every tank line in the game will create space in one of two ways. Resource advantage in the front line, an overwhelming, so overwhelm, or outmaneuver by having multiple angles. So outmaneuver, oh my god, how do you spell maneuver? I'm not even going to try to spell it. <laughs> Out position. So what this looks like is very obviously a six-man overwhelm play that they were not ready for. And we did a really good job combining our Orisa Halt with the Baptiste Window and all of our damage cooldowns. I'm sure we're all ready to go at this exact moment. Well executed. 
Um, and this just shows that the enemy was not ready for this kind of thing. They didn't have a kite plan. Our Sigma went one way, our Arisa went another. We didn't have the healers there ready to respond with a lamp. Little things like that instantly destroy these kinds of holds. Uh, but again, just to bring it up for future situations, if we wanted to take this point back and we didn't have Baptiste window, we would need to outmaneuver. And we would need to do that by either setting up off angles for, say, our Sigma Hanzo goes this way, while our Arisa group goes this way. Then we can get around the shield instead of having to burst our way through it. We can do things like have our uh, Tracer go to contest cart, and maybe there's no one on cart. Maybe if their Baptiste is on cart and our Tracer's there to contest it, they can no longer push the payload. Their positions no longer give them an advantage state. And maybe even we find a lucky kill if our Tracer is absolutely popping off or things like that. And conversely, we can also outmaneuver by doing a full six-man rotation, something like this. If we rotate all this way, then all of a sudden this hold that's designed to block these choke points doesn't really matter, and they're going to have to force to come up with a new defense for where we're coming into them. So even though, like I said, this is a very limiting tank line in terms of how we commit our resources, the way that we take space can always be creative. We had an easy option here because we had the Baptiste window and because their position was a little bit weak, so we just uh, absolutely annihilate them. Well done. But keep this in mind where we're either we don't have the ultimates to commit or our composition doesn't have the range damage necessary to make an overwhelm play work. We can play more creatively by outmaneuvering the enemy. So always keep those situations in mind. One of two situations need to happen to create space. Unless you get lucky and the enemy team feeds like someone's just sitting here and they just die for free, of course that will work. But I think we're playing at a level where that doesn't happen too often and we need to force advantages rather than happen into them. So well done forcing this one. But again, try, try to keep those situations in mind and what they might look like in different situations with different I, I compositions. I want to add the one thing for what you said. Mm -hmm. Um... About the splitting and whatever outmaneuvering, uh, all that of course it takes a it's a bit harder. But uh, just if you guys are actually gonna go try to do that, because I'm not gonna be with them uh, later on. But uh, if you guys are gonna try to do that, the timing is really important, and you need to get your value at the same time. You can't have your like Orisa picking out while your Sigma is rotating, and then uh, by the time Orisa gets spammed out, your Sigma is in. Like, you, you need to get the value at the same time. So you need your Sigma to get close enough to get value at the same time as the Orisa is speaking. Absolutely. And this is most important, again, with these tank lines, because they are so limiting. You have two buttons on Orisa, right? Well, you got one button that keeps you alive, <laughs> but then otherwise you've got two buttons that you can use. Compare that to someone like Tracer, who's got a million buttons, right? So you need to play around the least flexible member on your team. And that's not a bad thing, but it means you need the discipline as a team, as a six-man team, not just the Orisa player to be, okay, I'm waiting for Halt before Sigma say, I'm going to go on an off angle, set up my shield and put, try and rock them across the map. Or the Tracer player coming from underneath looking for a pulse bump. Or the Hanzo player looking for an angle over here kind of thing. You need to play for the least flexible resources. Otherwise, you'll be playing alone. And the more we play alone, the more we play six one-on-ones instead of one six-on-six, six, the less we're playing like a team, the less we're able to coordinate. And again, the less we're able to force advantages and the more we have to rely on just finding advantages on our own which is a lot less consistent and yeah. especially with these tank lines uh typically not recommended so yeah absolutely good point i should have brought that up myself to be honest but yeah even if you're not syncing who your target is all your cooldowns at once at the exact same time sync your aggression timing the moment you're peaking and hopefully you're able to sync up resources as well but even if it's like sigma pushing over here for example just to expand on this, say the enemy team is doing that split hold, say they have Arissa and they've got Sig Hanzo over here. Then it doesn't need to mean like we have a group going over here, a group over here, and we're all trying to focus one group, but it means our aggression is happening at the same time. So it's overwhelming them two times on two different situations because they can't respond to both fights at the same time. And we'll find a reason in one of these fights to find an advantage, whether that's an ultimate use or just cooldown alignment with pull or things like that to try and catch them off guard, put them on their back feet and take the advantage there. But that's enough talking about hypotheticals. Obviously, like I said, this was a very easy team fight because we did a really nice execution on our play and are getting aggressive. They even waste an ultimate. Thank you very much, Sigma. And we're able to clean up everything very nicely. I'm a little bit worried about our cleanup phase here. Um, obviously, these members, um, our Orisa, Sigma, and uh, Brigida have, even, actually our Tracer as well, have very easy ways of cleaning up fights. So I like that these are the moments we see most aggressive, but I would like to see just a little bit of, we'll say caution. When we see members like this at the same time as members like this, 
This is mainly just to mark the space so Hanzo can't get back in more than it is to chase down the Hanzo. And it's important to know where we're committing, again, our more linear resources, our less flexible ones, and basically the most of our attention so that any attention we find in other space has that little bit of a leash on them. Because if our Sigma gets a little ah, bit too aggressive so here, maybe the Genji and Hanzo find a 2v1 and force a kill before uh, we're able to regroup, that kind of thing. I don't think that happens here. I'd be very lucky if they did find that damage, but just something to keep in mind. We're always talking, even if we're split up around the map, about where the majority of us are getting aggressive so that anyone who's not part of that core understands they shouldn't be trying to for an aggressive mode themselves. Or if they are, it's with a specific purpose that helps each other. All right, positions here, I like a lot. Uh, I like this angle for the Sigma. I like this angle for the Orisa. I like Tracer trying to stay flexible. I think Tracer could also, continue, again, be a little bit more aggressive by like marking the space. Here, it'd be easier to just show it. Uh, marking the space down here so you can scout them incoming mains, even scout them incoming down here. Since there's so few options for attacking Junkertown, there's taking this high ground, there's trying to force it down main, and there's this rotation to take this high ground. I guess with more mobile members like, members like Genji and Hanzo, they can also go here, but Sigma shuts that down pretty easily. We should try and get eyes, even if we're not willing to commit there, we should try and get eyes as wide as possible here. And Tracer's our best bet for marking this angle, as well as maybe finding an aggressive reason to, if randomly we find a good pull of rock and Sigma goes down to half HP, maybe Tracer could finish them off or something like that. So this was, I like this a lot for the opportunity to go here. But since we're not really ready to go here as a team, I would like the opportunity to scout and deny this space as much as possible for Tracer specifically. I've got, I'm giving another notes for Tracer positioning, and again, that's only because Tracer is the one member of this team who can position uh, flexibly around the team comp. So it's pretty, it's pretty almost obvious where everyone else wants to be. It's Tracer who wants to be a little bit more um, unknown, I suppose. All right. Really nice lamp and rotation to deal with the blade. And again, this is a great situation where we don't have an immediate advantage. So this is a purely defensive kite. So we're using resources defensively like lamp to make sure we just survive this advantage window from the enemy team. As long as no one dies to blade, we can still come out as six and force our brawl advantage. And then we've taken down an ultimate basically for free. Maybe they push a payload a little, but we've basically kited out that ultimate for free. So now that we've gone past that opportunity window from the enemy Genji, now we can look to use our resources aggressively. So we went from purely defensive rotation into now we're grouped, we have communication to re-engage the fight. And if you want to get like really specific about this, you can almost think of this as two separate team fights, where the first team fight, we are absorbing them and we have to give up space, maybe some of us die and we're coming back from spawn, and then the second team fight, just like before, we have to use our BAP window to come up this choke and re-aggress into them. Obviously, it's not going to be that clear that it's two fights, but here is basically we used a lamp defensively. No one died because we kited well, but now we still need to think about the offensive resources we're going to use. Again, usually our Arisa, the shield, positioning, and halt, and then how we're going to play off that with tracer positions. Maybe tracer stays up here and goes behind. How our Hanzo is going to position, how our Sigma is going to mark off angles. So, for example, if our Arisa goes here directly to point, maybe our Sigma shield specific angles. Maybe our Sigma stays up top here and has them behind to enable Hanzo to get this angle. Maybe our tracer goes all the way back behind, tries to solo at a Zen. Lots of flexibility here, but this is now a coordinated re-engage. And if we try to treat this as if it's still an extension of the Genji Blade, when we didn't find any immediate value that signals that we're now in advantage of the fight, we should treat this as a brand new fight itself. I hope that made sense. I got a little bit wordy. Um, so just to sort of rephrase the whole thing, the Genji fight was good, but we spent resources and we spent positioning, giving up space to survive that. Now we need to have a plan to retake that space and again, find our own advantage because it's not enough to just not die. We need to win the fight. So let's see how we get out of this one. Uh, I yep. just want to note, because this is uh, recorded and uh, they're not here to mm -hmm. see themselves. Uh, our, when we cutted the Genji Blade, everybody went into the closed space on right side, but our Baptiste was uh, split on left. That happens uh, a bit too often that our Bap splits uh, in cutting or in rotation, and he gets punished for that a lot. So I just want to note it for him. Mm -hmm, for sure. The good I'm news is... <laughs> The, so let's see how this starts. So so Bab and Hanzo start at nearly the same position. So in theory, they should be able to develop the same way. Obviously, Hanzo's got his little mid-air hop. Uh, but other than that, they're basically yeah. the same character. So let's just watch our, our Hanzo rotate compared to our Baptiste. So immediately post-halt, we're already going. And 
I guess it's good that we didn't get hit by the halt as uh, from Pixels here, obviously. But we, immediately we should be racking defensively. I think in this position it's almost too late, and I might have rather seen you just starting position in here, thinking about it as Baptiste, yeah, knowing that like we don't have a reason to go in. Too much of a wide angle from the team, in my opinion, to react mm -hmm. to anything the team is doing. This is what I'll say an optimistic position, by which I mean it reacts very <laughs> nice. good to a reason to go aggressive. Like if we're collapsing on this, this is a great position to have but it doesn't have as many defensive options. So any position for any character in the game should have offensives and defensive options based on how the fight's going to go. Because you never really know what the enemy's going to do. You know what you want to do, but you're never entirely sure what's going to happen. So here, again, good offensive options, really strong position right here if we are brawling right in front of the cart. But you could t take a little bit of a slower offensive option, maybe even one aggressively over here, while having better defensive options up here. And especially with big ultimates in play, like Genji Blade, we need to make sure we are expressing those options with our position. So yeah, well, even before that halt comes out, we need to be thinking about that blade, essentially. But really good reaction not to panic <laughs> Lamp yourself here, because that would have 100% killed your team. Uh, and good reaction to getting with the team now. And now we have that opportunity to retake. And we've got Bongo this time. Another great example of just being able to fully overwhelm the enemy here with ultimate pressure. And they were definitely way too exposed considering where the rest of their team was. Um, but we absolutely take those. Those are free wins. Oh, unfortunately our Brig... Is this a is this a common theme for Zoom, I have to ask now? Where Brig is getting slightly too aggressive for the team. So, right here, literally perfect. Picture perfect textbook stuff, re-engage. But now, dealing with this, we need to make sure that... This is basically, again, if I wanted to be like really conceptual with it, like this was a team fight, now this is a team fight kind of thing. And yes, we have advantage going into this fight, but that doesn't mean we just get to walk into it for free. And literally just the smallest thing of Sigma taking down a shield is an instant headshot kill from the Zenyatta. Really nice shot from him, obviously, but definitely avoidable if we just play a little bit stricter around our resources. Same thing here with our Arissa, unless we have, sorry, sir, I know you're here, but I'm calling you out directly. Uh, if we don't have those resources to continue fighting space, we just used everything to fight here. We need something else to fight here. That could be Tracer's Aggression. That could be our next, even just Fortify. But even seeing this negative trade here where our Sigma gets hit out of his shift means we need to at least something to overwhelm the space. Because even though we have the numbers advantage, not everyone is able to capitalize as quickly as you are. And without your own resources to force this space, it might be a little bit ill-advised. Killing this Baptiste is 100% possible from a position over here. And again, with Sigma, he's got more flexibility in his shield. You shouldn't be the one needing this shield in the middle of a team fight. He should be the one flexing over to this space, you holding down the anchor. You still want to hold in front of this window, obviously. You don't want to back up and just eat a headshot like our Brig did. So holding space here just limits the amount of angles of opportunity. And then since your resources are so strict, when you have a shield, then you peek. When you have Fortify, then you peek. When you have a, uh, a halt to look for, then you can look for that. Let fl let Sigma flex off of your position rather than forcing that space in the front line. Um, and that does get me into another bit of a concept, but we'll just see how this fight ends up. We do start counting us back space. Okay, so it's basically over. Um, this concept of winning and trying to snowball versus winning and stabilizing so we were very much trying to snowball here because if we kill everyone right now that's like an extra 30 seconds off the clock that we get basically for free but as we're seeing obviously it's not free um so when i say you want to be strict about these positions and you want to be strict about your own personal resources this matters even more when you're ahead in a fight because when you're ahead you shouldn't need as many resources but that also means you shouldn't need to get as aggressive yourself as the main tank, for example. You should play for stability and making sure that trades like this never happen. Because if things like this start happening and you're always focused on going forward, and especially when they're playing members like Genji or Tracer or now a Wrecking Ball, you're going to end up giving up opportunities. And if it's not you dying, it's going to be your Baptiste in the back line that you got too spread from and you're using shields and fortify for yourself and pull for yourself, trying to clean up kills, not realizing you've given up an opportunity in your back line. That kind of thing. This is extremely common in these ver fairly forward-facing, what I'll call front-to-back compositions. They like to look in one direction. They like to put their tanks in front. They like to have their back line in the back, all shooting in the same space kind of thing. Um, the more you commit to just keeping going forward, and the more you commit resources especially, the longer you might stretch out your team. And unless everyone on your team comp is ready to go aggressive, and we're all calling that communicationally, and I don't think we were all calling to push in this exact moment because we saw a lot of people hanging back here, 
then we are risking stretching our team and we're risking up giving up this exact advantage that we saw here, whether it's in ourself or it's in our back line. So again, just when we're winning fights, don't be afraid to take it a little bit slower unless you have a team-wide play to commit to winning that fight all in. Oof, unfortunate kill from our Tracer as well, but she'll be back quickly, hopefully. This is now the situation. Com compared to this to first fight where we only lost our Orisa, now that we're down uh, our Orisa and our Tracer and we have relatively weak positions because our payload's about to cap, this is where I would say, again, it's warranted to start backing up space. Maybe not all the way down into these chokes like we did on first point, but at the very least, I would say play safer positions here. I'm a little bit questioning our signal Second position now. Yeah. I mean, we they just cut it in two separate directions, and mm -hmm. I, I remember calling, like, stacking on our sigma, and they just cut it. Uh, right. Just got uh, disconnected. Uh, like, yeah. If this ever happens, best thing you can call in comms is sigma, you're alone. And that instantly triggers like a defensive reaction for your Sigma, yeah. like in instead of even thinking about matching this Genji, oh, okay, I'll just cut back to cart. At the very least, I'll be safe from the Genji kind of thing. Not much you can do about it uh, if it gets too far gone. Are you sure that's exactly what's... Yeah, okay. Good, good. Oh, they tried to compensate. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and obviously we gave up a little bit of space, but that's way better than giving up a death on our Sigma, of course, and we get a nice kill on the Zen in response, so nice reaction, good response to that overall. Maybe a little bit limiting, but considering this is a match, I'd be happy with that as a coach. And yeah, we're again playing in a small space here, trying to deny space to Genji. Unfortunately, don't quite get the kill on him there. We are burning a lot of time on the clock. I would say now, funnily enough, we've gone from being disadvantaged in the poke war to now that they're on Wrecking Ball, we have massive advantage in the poke war. We have a halt. To follow up on we have a, an extra shield to follow up on and we have all the safety and all the positioning in the world as long as ball doesn't boop us all into their team so i would like to see a little bit of recognition now that we see ball swapped in and try to play way more aggressive off these halt plays this could very easily net a kill for your team if we were just a little bit more patient and lining up this cool down here 60 seconds remaining just showing it again obviously you see the opportunity and sometimes just like Reinhardt with Earth Shatter, you kind of need to hit the opportunities you see rather than try and wait for perfect yeah. ones. But this is one of those situations where every halt, every shield should be called. And if they're not followed up, maybe you did call it. I wasn't there in comms, obviously. Um, but I that could have... Yeah, of course. That could have done more <laughs> than break Sigma Shield. It maybe could have gotten a kill with just like an extra second of prep time. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Nice oh, combo yeah. from uh, Zoom and Cold here. Small thing, and obviously we're mid-fight, so it doesn't matter too much here, but obviously I'd like to see Sigma and Arisa's position swapped. There you go, a little shuffle. Uh, so again, now that we're playing against a non-span... Okay, wait, never mind, they went back to Arisa. I'm just kidding. I can't see anything. Um, I would still like to see more pressure here, just because this Genji should never be free. Honestly, you could theoretically do this with Tracer or Brigida as well and just mark the space here but obviously it's a lot safer to do with Sigma and since we're not 100% focused on just permanent shield uptime permanent damage in one direction we can sacrifice a little bit of staying power we have the high ground even if our Arisa shield goes down we can just back up a little bit and have natural cover even if it means a little bit of lost damage and that's way better for us to deny the space from Genji than it is to deny maybe an opportunity for a halt follow-up. Yeah, Genji's a little bit worrisome in the back, but just like on first point and uh, some points in second, they are splitting their resources. We saw their Sigma go here, their Arisa is still coming from spawn, their Genji's all the way over here. This could be a trigger for us to force a brawl. We could see an opportunity here to just all rotate, drop onto the Sigma on the Mega Pack if we had uh, someone able to scout him out. If our Tracer, for example, is Pretty able sure to blink into the screen. Happens. All right, let's see it. I would like to see it, honestly, like three seconds ago. You know, ideally, knowing that we have the spawn timers from Orisa coming in would be the biggest trigger for me, but especially knowing this Genji's in the back here, what is Genji going to do if we all just run down these stairs right now? Okay, I think we're about to see it, though. We see the Sigma commit. Now we're seeing, obviously, with both these tanks here, this now becomes a much harder ask to do. Still not impossible because their DPS aren't really relevant in this space, but a lot harder for sure. So we commit the rally. We're committing to the into the room now we instantly pop their trance uh and their sigma alt so 
Again, this is kind of a situation. I don't know how. Let's actually just watch to see how this unfolds. Dragon traded both ways as well. We do kill the Baptiste. Uh, We're trying to follow with Sigma ults. Oh, okay, but we dropped back. We got one more time from outside. I think I already told this to Melo, but like we're stacking dragging on the trends. Mm -hmm. like, and yeah. we should all be really committing in one direction right now and not kiting in three different directions. Yeah, you said it, absolutely. The biggest thing here is even though this is a defensive reaction, we still have lamp, I believe, right? I think we use lamp in this situation. Uh, no, yeah, we free yeah. fruit in the beginning. Nope. We got it right here. We just got a lamp off to survive the Sigma Flux. Knowing we, that we have the staying power, and if I'm Pixels right now, I would like to hear him just yelling like, I have lamp, I have lamp, every time we get Sigma Flux, something like that, so we know we have the staying power. Yes, we don't want to stand in this dragon, but we could very easily still re-aggress right now. This is the timing we need. And I think there's a bit of a, a false mindset here of thinking because they committed all these ultimates, because we didn't immediately kill everyone because of the Trance and Dragon, uh, and because we had to use lamp, that the correct call is to kite here. And while that's not necessarily a bad call, it's also worth noting that kiting here in the safest way possible actually looks like this direction. Because this is the known space. This is where our tanks are, number one. Uh, and this is where we're not forcing ourselves through an unknown choke. Even if like the Sigma wasn't here, just Genji alone would be reason enough for me to not want to kite through this door. Uh, and again, like we're, we're already hard committed with our tanks. We're basically in a situation that dictates like if our tanks win this fight right now, we can full hold this map. And it's 10 seconds left on the clock. There might have been a bit of panic going on. Obviously, this is a very chaotic fight. There's ultimates being thrown around everywhere. But this is where that structure is needed. So, two notes. Uh, one, it should have happened much sooner. And that call should come from seeing the positional advantage that we have. Seeing that Sigma rotate that early. And again, I would have liked to see Tracer down here scouting that earlier. Um, but she was doing other stuff, so it's fine. Uh, but we did still see the Sigma down here. That's what made us make this call in the first place. But the Orisa was here on time. And their Zen was here on time. That we could have... Honestly, we probably could have forced, at the very least, Sigma to fall back, maybe even a kill, before Sigma, before, sorry, before Zen or Orisa could do anything to help their Sigma. So it should have happened faster. Look for those advantages, be strict about your timings, and go in when it suits you. Um, even with Rally, just to kill Sigma, I think that's 100% a worthwhile trade. And then the second thing, specifically for our backline here, making sure that we are communicating with our tanks in the mid-fight, and we're communicating with each other to know exactly what our staying power looks like, if this is something we need to win right now, it's worth laying your life down on the line for it. Not to the point where we're running through a dragon, probably, uh, but to the point where we're committing into a risky situation, knowing that we have the resources to win it. So at the very least, in communication, I'd want to hear winnable, 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 or something similar, or like Orisa, 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 and stuff like that. And I'd want to see us having the confidence to commit heavily into this kill and then develop from there. But we have two brains going on right now in our team. One brain is saying... We just got everything we could have out of this fight, and we should try and stabilize. And we're going to do that by safer positioning, probably rotating back to the cart, considering it's about to end. And there's another brain that's saying, if we commit to this fight right now, we win the game. And neither one of those is brains is completely wrong, but we need one brain as a team. And I'm sure you know this as a main tank player, especially, Sar. Uh, but everyone on the team should know that everyone committing to the same condition it doesn't mean the same position every time but in this case it definitely does everyone committing to the same idea of what the team fight should look like means that the team is working together and here we just committed in two different ways yeah honestly they, these guys are way better are way worse off in this room than we do than we are mm -hmm. okay. the dangerous part would be if that genji blade finds in but you saw how long it took for genji to get relevant there and if we kill everyone, even without uh, our Baptiste Lamp, if we kill everyone and then it's just a Genji Blade versus our two tanks in there, we probably still win that. But unfortunately, that's us giving up second point. Overall, again, not bad. A lot of these situations, I imagine, aren't um, aren't necessarily consistent, but they just happen to unfold this way in, uh, in match day and things like that. But this is where team structure comes in clutch. This is the moments where... As a team, if we had the right instincts and we knew each other and we had the communication and everything lined up perfectly, we would have clutched out that situation and we probably would have won this map uh, as it unfolds. But now we're on third point, so let's talk about third point. They've swapped back onto a Wrecking Ball here and they've swapped onto Brig and Ana. So they're swapping into more of a hybrid divish type composition and we are staying solid with our Arista Sigma. Um, playing into this matchup means a couple different things for our front line specifically. It means we can play relatively passive space and still have the spawn, not the spawn, but the, still have the spam advantage.
from our front line alone um, because we just have shields and they don't. But it also means that we need to be really strict with our, our spreading. Like I was saying earlier, if we try to get aggressive as Orisa or as Sigma and it stretches our back line too far from our front line, that's an advantage for Ball and Genji or maybe even for an anti-nade to land from an Ana or something like that that we should be able to avoid. And the way we avoid that is finding strict timings around our inflexible resources. I'm going to say this a hundred times before the VOD ends uh, and making sure that we're all playing into that same timing, that same target, that same condition where we have advantage, which is still the brawl. Still either the spam or the brawl we have advantage in. So we fight, we force fights in those situations only and we don't spit ourselves in thin groups. So we don't force 1v1s or things like that. The only one who could probably do that again is Tracer just because she's Tracer and Tracer does what she wants. So, brawling right up here. This is so good for us. We almost killed our Sigma. We get forced off a little bit, but we find our way back up. Again, this is still really, really good for us. Them committing all these cool... Yeah, like, they're on a timer. All these characters, if they don't find value from their timings of going aggressive, they're going to be forced to give up space way sooner than us because they don't have these tanks anymore. So this is really good just to survive that opportunity where all of them are going aggressive, let alone getting a kill on top of that. If we don't kill this Genji seeing all those cooldowns used, seeing ball being forced back, things like that, that could trigger a response to six-man dive like the Sigma on cart. And then we just throw a shield in front of the Ana, we brawl on cart, he's forced to use defensive resources, we can throw up a new Orisa shield most likely, we can find a halt target, things like that, and then Tracer and Hanzo on our team are just running free because they're forced onto the back foot. This is kind of just dive versus spam or brawl in a nutshell. Um, just to draw a little bit of graph for anyone who likes math or things like that, uh, so this, this is one of my favorite things to do with teams. Uh, this is a value over time graph. And we'll use blue for our team, and we'll use red for the enemy team. In the dive comp, they need time to... In neutral, they don't really do much versus us. We got shields, they can't really threaten us, but as they start getting set up, then they can hit spikes here, where they have high value. This is where Ball is diving, Genji's going in. Maybe they're throwing an anti-nade, maybe Hans is finding an angle, maybe the six shield's up, and they're trying to get as aggressive as possible. But if they don't find kills here... This value only lasts so long before it drops down and they fall even lower than their expected neutral value, where they're just sitting back behind Sigma Shield and shooting damage. Us, as long as we have positions, as long as on defense we can say start up here like we did this fight, we start way up here. So we've got higher value than them in the neutral because we've got more range damage. And as long as no one dies, we basically stay up here the whole time. Maybe as they're diving, we drop down expectedly here because we have to play defensively, we have to use defensive cooldowns, maybe we have to give up space. But then we stabilize way easier, and maybe even we spike a little bit higher when we're able to find that brawl engage, when we're able to use halt and shield aggressively, and this is where we're able to use like halt and shield defensively kind of thing. The biggest thing about this graph is recognizing the areas where your team resides above the enemy team's expected value. So what this means is during these moments, both pre and post dive, we're expected to win the fight. We're expected to have more value during the fight, so we should play into those timings very strictly to make sure we're not falling into areas where they have advantage during the fight. And all that means is, when we're getting dove right here, exactly what we did. We commit to countering the dive rather than trying to like go aggressive or trying to hold space even. We can give up space. That's fine if we lose a bit of value as, le as long as they're not popping off because they're about to fall straight six feet underground as long as we survive, just like this Genji is. Not every fight is going to go like this way, and obviously things change with ultimate economy. Sometimes if they have nano blade, it doesn't matter how defensively you play, they'll just team wipe you anyway, unless you can find a way to outplay them. Um, but understanding those opportunity windows and understanding how your compositions win conditions or advantage states or whatever you want to call it match up against the enemies should determine when and where you're calling for those aggressive plays. So, like I said, the pre-fight here where we're able to find spam, put up our shields, find a halt combo, things like that. Huge advantage for us, as long as the ball isn't ready to go in yet. As long as the ball and the Genji, I should say, aren't ready to go in yet. But then as soon as they are, we can give up a little bit of space. We use Brig defensively. We might even be forced to Lamp defensively. Maybe we halt defensively, things like that, try to combo the ball out. But then as soon as our cooldowns are over, they've got nothing left in the tank. We push back out. We can force a Brawl onto this Sigma. We can force a Brawl onto this Brig or Hanzo even. And then we have a big advantage there as well, at least until their next set of dive cooldowns come back up. Does that all make sense? Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Just wanted to make sure, because I went on a bit of a rant there. Just wanted to make sure I'm not losing anyone. Uh...
and this is what we see actually this is really really good except that initial warning of splitting our front line and our back line is yeah. almost coming true here so this uh, is it was go ahead uh well i mean i walked out of spawn in this passing knowing i want to engage the point because uh, i don't want to take like a 30 second rotation to high on. Mm -hmm. I was thinking we. I was thinking our five people on top could like overwhelm the sigma and the uh, pick the high gun and help me on the low gun, but uh, they couldn't. They got pushed back the other side. So now we need to stack and go. And uh, you can see like our engage is kind of mistimed. Me and sigma is in, and the uh, Baptiste is still would still be like on the other half. And only now is like slightly picking, getting a little bit straight. Like it's it's okay right now, but. Uh, it might fall apart. In a different yeah, in a different situation, like uh, we lose this fight. Yeah, so yeah, I'll let it play out, just to see exactly what happens. We do clean up, it looks like. So well done, but yeah. it did become a little bit dangerous, specifically for our Hanzo player. So I'm gonna go back to the start of this and see how fast realistically our backline could have followed up. Because this is either this is either one of two problems. This is either our front line, so you as the main tank calling this too aggressively, not knowing where your backline was or what they were dealing with. Or it was our backline not following the call quickly enough because either they were focused on another target or they weren't focused on committing to the brawl itself. So let's take a look at what that was. So this is you underneath right now. This is right where we I'm killed the Genji. I'm asking if I can get help if, I'm, if mm -hmm. I cross right now. I think right now, if we cross right now and rush to point, like we say like brawl point or whatever your comm is for this moment, I think we're all in fine situations to do that. Again, Ball doesn't have his, his grapple ready. We have zoom on top of the ball. So even if he has a dive, like this 1v1 goes in zoom's favor 10 times out of 10. Maybe not with mines available for Ball or something like that. But otherwise, we are happy with this trade. And then our Hanzo and Baptiste should be able to develop straight onto point with you. But I think we overcommit a little. Both our Hanzo and Baptiste instead focus on the ball, which to any DPS players out there, is always the wrong choice, no matter what hero you're playing, unless you've got like three forms of CC to knock them under the ground for five minutes. Um, so this is where we needed to make sure that call was followed a little bit more strictly here. Obviously, Tracer is always going to be available, but these two, again, are more inflexible members, are the most important to follow this comm, and they should be following you 100%. So I'm, I'm guessing this was just either a missed comm or just an accidental mistiming. But yeah, this is 100% avoidable if we're just moving a little bit more aggressively with our Brig. It doesn't matter, ultimately. We find the kills, we all stay alive, so well done. But could have been a little bit cleaner and maybe in an unluckier situation that ball finds a solo kill onto your Hanzo or something like that. But overall, well done. I like that call a lot. Um, just to make sure, you do know the jump, right? To get onto high ground. You mentioned 30 second rotation. Yeah, I know okay. the jump <laughs> and then and then and then sometimes I do it and sometimes I just want to like fucking stab somebody <laughs> and like yeah, I feel that. Because Orisa is so fat, like... Oh, yeah, it's even so worse over here, yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I feel you. No worries. That was the right call either way. But, yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to make sure. Alright, again, this is a good situation to potentially look for a halt combo, look for that spam damage to find an early advantage. This is our poke giving us an advantage. But then, as soon as they get past our poke windows, they're using Sig Shield. We look for the pull. Not quite there. That's our poke window starting to lose value. Now we need to instantly worry about this ball and this Genji going in. This is their power spike about to happen. So, we should make sure we're just ready to respond to that. We're more than fine. We use our shield defensively. Sorry, I think we should have forced a fight on an aggressive engage with Bonk. Like, on the first... Half on the first pull? Like first seconds no, um, fuck, the fuck the poke phase. They walk on the joke <laughs> and we, 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 we engage with the bongo. Because I feel like we do, we have like a such a small window with the poke phase here and they can just stabilize mm -hmm. it anyway when we make the first like very little rotation. And we are just letting them have this uh, space and this setup and this time to like 3 to 1 pick us instead of uh, uh, setting up to run. Yeah, setting the pace with, yourself. Uh, run me with one go and pull and also the fight placement would be much better yeah, yeah so two things i'll mention about that um so one if that was the call it needs to be made like right now 
before the enemy even shows themselves and shows where they're rotating and i'd want to yeah. set up like on this side with the readiness to go down into these stairs because if they're forced to play either on the point or underneath here these are way easier brawls versus if we're up here and we have to cross all this distance or if we have yeah, to jump yeah, across course. here it's a lot harder to do so yeah setup needs to come as early as possible nice. if that's the call we want to make uh next thing i'll say once we are set up here if we want to force that brawl even once we do see them rotating this is where we would need to make the call as soon as we see their genji and ball because now we know their potential to dive on top of us and this is where we could actually ignore their dive potential if we reposition during their setup this is hard to do with our lucio obviously but still doable at this moment but also this is a moment where we could expect more value during the poke phase as well with a baptiste ultimate we could play either more heavily into the brawl like you said with the bongo or even with dragon technically we could have like hanzo on an off angle dragoning as we brawl into them something like that or we could play more heavily into the poke phase as well. There's there's multiple advantages here we could capitalize on. The key is just making that call as early as possible. Even if it's not 100% perfect, even if it doesn't find the value you're expecting it to, making sure you, you guys, as a six-man team, have the discipline to make that call early, set up for it, and everyone knows what they're doing as early as possible. Again, obviously... The call was... Kiss. No, go ahead. Sorry. Not, not The call was the window, not, not by me, but like the call was mm -hmm. the window, but I just, I just said like, my well, was in because i think it's just a better call yeah honestly it's it's hard to say which one would be quote unquote better i like the brawl idea i like the window idea uh but the window i think would need to come you would need to guarantee pull value you would need to guarantee this pull hitting like hanzo and brig you need like a perfect one second window yeah. follow up like yeah like everything. right here i think you're probably like, calling uh, it you're trying to pull but we don't see anyone massive being hit so we probably I have call this it off. fucking spinning thing on my face <laughs> that i can't pull this yeah like, that's you know. very unlucky for sure um but i mean that's overwatch right every plan will seem perfect until you try to execute it even the brawl play like maybe you try to go for the brawl but then we were too slow or they just rock us and we get knocked back or something bad happens or they sigult us if they have it something bad can always happen um again the biggest thing is just making sure we all understand and maybe if we wanted to make the pull better like maybe we position more aggressively over here for like an easier pull timing and stuff like that maybe it makes us more exposed to the dive but we know that we're not even waiting for them to set up a dive things like that there's always little ways to make things better and that always starts with the earliest call possible um but yeah we unfortunately don't get that value from the poke phase we counter their dive well enough and now again is our opportunity to fight back into the fight this is where i'm expecting either a dragon or a window to come out hopefully comboed with a pull to capitalize on the fact that their divers are out of cooldowns we've stabilized fine we haven't even used our lamp and we have an opportunity to go back into them we could also force like a bongo brawl here but unfortunately the targets which we want to brawl are a little bit out of reach sigma even from here is pretty far away and if we focus always on sigma he's just going to get healed up briggs too far away the ana hanzo should be able to kite us out pretty easily unless we hit a crazy pull from this range um so i would say windows probably the easier play here but let's see how it plays out The bonga play and the dragon play and again we're seeing a situation where i think we were a little bit lost on who our target was here post bongo and post dragon we killed the brig kind of for free so that's nice for sure but this is a situation where we have a choice to either wrap aggressively this way force this genji out or even collapse onto this sigma and I think both are fine. I would probably prefer the Sigma play, but we need this call right now, right away. If we're not constantly calling a target during our aggressive moments right now, it's too easy to get split up, just like we were against this ball when we rushed underneath. And I think here it might cost us a life if we don't capitalize properly, because we see our Sigma Hanzo playing a little bit defensively, get kiting away from the ball. We see you and Baptiste and Tracer looking aggressively down main, and we see Zoom looking aggressively onto the Sigma and ball. These are all fair opportunities but we need to commit to one as a team and let's see what we find zoom tries to find a bash backs out we're a little bit slow to act off that dragon we needed to find either more position uh or more pressure off of that again i think killing the sigma there would be our best bet but now we're forced in a situation again where we either deal with these divers and deal with this mind play and force the sigma out and play a little bit defensively or we try to ignore this threat in our backline and move past it and if we make two separate brains again like if our hanzo plays safe or if our baptiste plays safe while the rest of us go forward that's a big miss team wide opportunity and i think that's exactly what's happening here oh and also unfortunately our tracer gets slept during all of this we don't have the killing power with our tanks to oh we barely don't finish the sigma off 
and we're just a little bit too disconnected. Again, the exact same thing happened on second fight there, and I'm, I'm guessing it's just due to a lack of clean mid-fight calls about targets and about timing of going aggressive. It Conceptually, it definitely helps to think about this as like, this team fight was like three micro team fights. There was the poke phase, we lost the poke phase, we gave up space. There was the dive phase, we equalized the dive phase, we had an opportunity to go aggressive. We used alts to go aggressive, but then during that fight, we split up. And that was that was what we lost, actually. We, we traded out, okay, the first two phases, we didn't get much from the poke, but that's okay. They didn't get much from the dive, so we're for equal, essentially. But then this third turn, while it's still part of the same team fight, needs the same level of coordination as the first phase, if that makes sense. So it's not good enough to start on the same page when you're just trading jabs and not really committing aggressively. It's the moment that you actually commit that matters most for the actual communication, for the structure, for the timing from everyone here. So understanding that we're playing for this during this moment, I don't know if this was calmed ahead of time or how well it was calmed mid-fight, but this is where we need that synergy because otherwise the moment that matters most, we're splitting up on. And of course, that's never what we want to do. And then they're able to just brawl through us when we're the brawl team. And now we're in overtime spawns trying to get that space back. Not a fun situation to be in. Fast forward a bit till we get out of spawn. Tracer's here to touch and get aggressive. We have Baptiste window available, but that's it. We get a nice pick on the Hanzo. Already, I'm seeing a little bit of mismanagement of timing here. So again... We know Trace is the one to touch here. No one else on the team really can from our position. But this use of Halt and our first shield here is met with no follow-up. And again, I know you're probably calling all these things, but we should be talking about this as we're coming out of spawn. We should be talking about like, okay, I'm going to wrap right, I'm going to wrap main, I'm going to look for a Halt, and then we're going to follow that up with uh, Hanzo's damage. If this signature isn't here, this is the exact same as starting first fight on attack. This is the exact same as retaking second point when we used our Baptiste window. If we've shown that we have the level of communication in those situations, we need to show it here as well. We need that consistency, we need that synergy every single fight we go into, otherwise it's gonna be an uphill battle every time. I know it's overtime, I know it's hectic, I know this isn't the ideal condition for us to be fighting in, we don't have all the resources we would like to have, we don't have the spawns or the positions we would like to have, but that's when it matters even more. When we're down, and when we're down positions, when we're at disadvantage, the coordination is what carries us through these moments. This is how we clutch out this fight, by strict communication, strict coordination. And again, I'm looking at Arissa primarily, but this matters for everyone. Obviously, like the shield and the pull here had, didn't have enough follow-up for it, but the same could be said for Sigma's position. The same could be said for Tracer's aggression timing. Is anyone following up Tracer's target kind of thing? We do find that kill. I think it's a little bit luckier that we do find that kill. Does the window find enough value? Oh, that's a big anti-nade. Probably not. And then the mine shut it down. Again, you can kind of see. I'll just do this to drive the point home. You can kind of see how split our aggression is. <laughs> We've got members all over the place. We've got members looking in all sorts of different directions right now. And this is where that lack of coordination is probably going to cost us the map. Not the map necessarily, but the point. They're probably going to full cap because we're not able to get meaningful value out of our advantages our advantages being these ultimates going off the window the dragon whatever pull timings we have whatever positions we have for sigma and orissa we can use all of those resources all six of us can use those resources but if we're not coordinating we're not going to find those timings strictly enough and they're going to be able to outplay those defensive resources instead of us being able to capitalize on them maybe we stabilize this we do have the spawn advantage oh brig going down it's rough and yeah, one by one. All of these members on the enemy team are so hard to kill. And without that strict timing, it feels almost impossible for sure. So that's going to be the map capped out. Uh, and again, it's not that this is like extremely bad or anything. I know I'm being pretty critical in my feedback talking about this. Um, this is very common for almost every team. But I want you guys to recognize that you have these opportunities and you've shown really high levels of coordination. Again, this moment where you retook over here with the Baptiste window, that was super clean and well executed. Granted, a little bit easy and obvious, you had a Baptiste window here, and we didn't see the same level of communication or coordination. We split off with our Sigma when we knew the Baptiste window was our only ultimate. We didn't line up the pull timing with our Baptiste window, and we didn't get the expected value that we got on second point retake. We need to see that consistency, especially in the high pressure situations.
So this isn't really something you need to learn. It's just something you need to be better at applying in game, if that makes sense. And again, most of that comes down to communication and discipline on every player's part. If you know that you're not the one carrying the team fight, so for example, like our, our Sigma there, our Sigma going on that retake, and I don't mean to call anyone out personally on this, it's not like Sigma threw that fight or anything, but just as an example, our Sigma there was not the key part of retaking that point, right? The key parts was likely the halt and the Baptiste window. So Sigma and Hanzo and Tracer and Brig should all be playing into those win conditions, into those advantages, very strictly, even if it means not getting personal value of their own, to make sure that that carry potential is actually there. Like I said, there's a lot of situations where we play strictly about around the linear uh, and the restrictive cooldowns of Orisa, and Sigma and Tracer do a good job of like plugging up the gaps, but they do a good job of plugging up the gaps when they're not focused on trying to find their own value. If they're trying to find their own value, they're only opening up more gaps. All right, I hope that all made sense. Does anyone have any questions or comments about our defense there before we get into the attack round? I mean, it's just about the fight on third there when we were like talking always about the poke with the window and the bro with the bongo and all that shit. Um, and I'm just using this as an example, but it's like a general thing. We kind of, I think we were like absolutely winning that fight until people started doing... Um, until we saw that split from the, the Hans and the Baptiste and primarily, right? Fine. So like, so like we, I, I called that Bongo engage with the Bongo and pull on the brig. Uh, we luckily killed the brig after the pull. And then we, we dragon like uh, opposite side of the fight. And we start like splitting our attention around mm -hmm. the whole map, you know, instead of being like, okay, they are pushing the high on, we bongo, we kill the big, turn, kill the sigma, or like, you know, uh, it just happens, just happens often in this team. I think that people is like uh, wondering of like mid rotation, we po we start poking instead of rotating, or like random shit. Yeah, uh, are you calling meaning um, mid fight discipline, basically? Yeah. And yeah, look at uh, look at your main tank and uh, go there. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, I agree. And, yeah, and like, sure. uh, what I type on the chat, uh, what we'd be lacking is like uh, early calls and then like a faster reaction to the calls and then all, yeah, for sure. everybody commits on the same uh, plan. So either it's the, the call is wrong or not, at least we did it together. So yeah, for sure. It's, and this refer, refers for the second point, the stairs. Basically. Exactly. I was about to bring that up. And again, yeah. I think a big point here is not to like, again, I don't want to call anyone out. I, I've only been looking at one map from you guys. I don't know how consistent this is personally. Um, but this is a matter of players individually putting their own value above the value of the teams. So for example, the Hanzo and Baptiste here backing up was because they wanted to survive longer in the fight and didn't think about the value their tanks were currently finding. The fight back here, just yeah. like you said, the Hanzo and Baptiste kiting back this way. Granted, in this this case was a little bit different. They were getting dove by a ball and they did get booped out of position. So it's, it is harder, but it still wasn't, I wasn't seeing the, the click happen. I wasn't seeing that decisive moment happen where they decide to follow the team. And that's exactly what you guys are talking about. That moment needs to happen, especially in these chaotic moments, because that's how you stay together as a team. That's how you overlap value with your cooldowns and your positions and everything like that. Um, and really, it comes down to individual dis uh, decisiveness and just like we talked about, that discipline necessary to find those moments, because there is a lot of shiny things on your screen in Overwatch. That get to, it's, it's very easy to get distracted, is what I'm saying. Definitely. So. Yeah. It's very hard to do this. And the only Small way mistake. that you're going to get better at this is by making these mistakes and learning from them and getting slightly more disciplined the next time you face these. So yeah. it sucks that that happens in the match. It sucks that we lost a couple fights for those reasons. But it's actually very good for you guys as a team and for your players to experience this, to see this, especially from a top-down view, review these situations and understand I could have done this. And even though I would have done less personally, the team would have succeeded. And those are very, very important moments to learn from. Just quick question, are we watching the whole map? Um, I was here, or... I'm here for another half hour at least. We don't need okay. to watch all of it if there's specific moments you'd rather highlight. Got you. Do you um... happen to remember any moments or did you want to jump to another map even? No, no, no. It, this map is probably the best to look at. It's just, um, I was thinking about our next, 
our second like uh, first point defense had some uh weird stuff on it and our attack here on second point okay yeah we can definitely skim through some stuff i'll i i know like, i'm uh, i talk a lot and i tend to rant i could go over like this first point for probably two hours alone if i wanted to um so i'll probably. definitely <laughs> i'll I definitely skip this, ahead this, uh this point uh i mean here we we, probably, we should have won this fight yeah, probably so i mean okay that's an easy kill this kind of whack but uh I'll, I'll, I'll go through that, this at 1.5 speed. Yeah. Anything obvious, I'll be sure to point out. So actually, already, I know I'll try to be better at not puzzling all the time. Um, quick question for you, actually, as the main tank player, especially, not just in terms yes. of how you react to this, but how do you think the best way to capitalize off this Zen dying would be? What do you think the best option would be for your entire team to get as much off of this kill as possible? I'm sorry, what? So now, okay, now, we got, yeah, sorry, sorry, I'll reword so it. We got this, we got this, we got this yeah. end, now what? Yeah, exactly. What's the best way we can reposition, use our cooldowns to make sure that this kill gets the most value possible? It's not just a kill on Zen, it's not just a little bit of payload progress. What else can we get? Um so uh unfortunately like this is really early into the mm -hmm. fight, so it's not like the most uh highest impact uh, win condition going now win the fight. But uh, right now, I would be uh, playing close to each other, pushing up the payload up to the corner, and then looking to run the fucking while we are five, while we are still five v six. With tracer probably going on the right lane, and everybody, yeah, probably going on the right lane or the widow, I guess. And everybody is just stacking and walking in all the way to their asses. I actually disagree. For the first time in the session. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that's optimistic because what you're thinking right now is how are you going to take the next team fight? And what you need to be thinking of, again, when we're winning a fight, whenever we kill someone, we're up a number, it's very easy to think like, how do we, how do we win the next, how do we just kill everyone else? How do we win this next team fight right away? And from this position, exactly like you said, this is a very early kill that we got on the Zen. It's not very obvious that we have a target to rush on immediately. And we already know that because we killed the Zen, the enemy is going to be reacting defensively. They already know they're at disadvantage. They want to back up. They want to give up space. The best thing that I would recommend you guys do right now is try to force them into the weakest position possible. And in this case, what that would look like is basically uh, corralling the enemy. You treat them like a herd of sheep and we become the sheepdogs, especially our frontline members who can take any 1v1 and come out alive at the very least. And we take situations where we force this Hanzo to back up, we force this Widow to back up, and we limit their DPS options for the next fight. It's not going to win the fight immediately. Like you said, like if we're able to like brawl, if we had like Lucio Ryan right now, if we had a dive comp, we could just jump in knowing their Zen's already dead and probably find a good trade. But we're playing a relatively slow comp. The distance is a little bit too long to actually force and engage, but we want to force, force them to give up the entire map rather than just back up like this. We want them to back up like this. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's like a kind of a word game trying to talk about these fights like that <laughs> in theory. But uh, you know, uh, just so just play this fight and mm -hmm. pretty yeah, much, let's play it. So pretty much like exactly what I did here, and just have the team more stacked and ready to go. Because look what happens here. Our sigma is too wide angle. Okay. Uh, not ready to <laughs> like like we're not ready to follow. Like look at this guy. I find a, I find a pull on the Hanzo on the right. He should have died. Mm -hmm. put on the sigma in the main. like this is just personal mistakes by them but like right now they should be back right you know yeah Probably. for sure and so yeah uh, this it's kind of like not a good example of this because they do kind of feed like the sigma dies like you said the hunter should have died yeah, they no, were yeah, way yeah. too aggressive they should have been giving up more space kind of... my, my main worry is this widow because if this widow finds an equalization right now if she happens to pick any one of these people then that's a free recontest and that's free map space for all of them Versus if we force them to give up this kill, this isn't what happened. So it's not really relevant to talk about for this fight, but like that kill on Sigma shouldn't be guaranteed basically versus taking yeah, the space away from the... Widow and Hanzo will always be guaranteed when we can put tanks in front of their faces, right? That's all, that's all I wanted to bring up. But like you said, we find the kills anyway. We force them back anyway. We get kills even fastest. They're kind of feeding at this point by, uh, by overexposing them. Oh, we almost killed that bad beast too. But, um... I think the more guaranteed is... play is basically to snowball space rather than snowball kills more often than not. Is basically the point yeah, I'm trying to bring up. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I agree. It's just that... <laughs> Except they're feeding, so yeah. <laughs> it's, hard, it's, it's, hard, uh, it's hard to, like... Uh, it's not always 100% uh, of the time. Yeah. Ex, uh, no, it's actually uh, express it in a sentence when we're talking about, like, time frames, this, that, that whatever. Yeah, you know. sorry. I, maybe a little bit too <laughs> conceptual, for sure. I uh, guess it's... the biggest note for the front line in any snowballing situation is you never want to just landlock yourself. You don't want to just be on the payload yeah. when you're already ahead. You want to snowball that space by taking the angles like this, or in this case, by overwhelming someone who's, who's staying overextended, by which we found the kill on the Sigma. Um, either one of those is fine. We found this opportunity. If that opportunity doesn't present itself, I'd like to see you spreading with your Sigma, like Sigma Hanzo go over here, maybe you and Tracer go over here, and then we just leave even yeah. Baptiste on cart because they have less of a threat, and then we can force them all the space, and then we can get a more guaranteed brawl. We set up that brawl rather than try and force it right away, is what I'm saying. Uh, wanna see how we lose this fight because uh, I, I assume we just played too much too much uh, wide yeah. angle and allowed ourselves to get picked off. I think uh, the biggest thing right now, I could draw through your team in a straight line. We are all grouped on point, and again, like I said, to snowball space to set up a better brawl, we need to corral the enemy. There's nothing that's going to be contested. So if we're br if we are a dive team, if we were playing Winston Diva right now. This is fine because Winston can go up here. Diva can go up here. We can send a Genji up here if we're playing Genji. We can use, if we had a Widow back here, we can use sight lines like this kind of thing. But right now, all of our defensive resources aren't actually defending the important thing. So what I'm guessing is going to happen, I haven't actually seen this uh, attack yet. What I'm guessing is going to happen is these three members are going to kill everyone and all we can do yes. is shoot at Orisa. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um... We'd probably put our, the Sigma Brig to the right side of the choke Oop. and put the, the Baptiste just straight hugging the main wall. Like, we can't play any range, any angles. They have like 900 times more poke than mm -hmm. us. What I'd love to see gonna... right here, again, like trying to force that brawl. I love the idea of it, but think about the steps we need to take to force that brawl. Right here, now that we know we have this entire map, we can play wherever we want. we got time to rotate. I would love to see our Sigma and Hanzo, maybe even our Brig, taking this space. This one cuts off this angle and then can actually threaten anyone who stays up here. Uh, we, can keep, yeah. we can keep you on payload because they're going to be forced to touch the payload if they want to recontest, and that's just free value for you to be anchored there. We can have our uh, Baptiste in a safe angle with you using this side of the map probably because they we know this is shut down from the enemy team, uh, and then we just collapse on them. This is forcing them to commit more people to cart, and then we brawl on court, cart. If we just stick on cart here, kind of what I was worried about here, if we just stick on the payload, there's nothing forcing all of them into a brawl situation. And sure, we can brawl Arissa and Sigma and whoever else touches, but those aren't the important members that we want to be brawling, right? So it's a lot harder to set yeah. up the brawl we want versus the brawl that they give us. And I guess another way of putting this is like, who do you want them to be shooting at the entire fight? It's you, right? <laughs> You're the one who can take the hits. So here, they get to choose who takes the hits. And we never want to let them choose. That's a free space for the Hanzo. Yeah, like you, you saw the Hanzo, yeah. Baptiste, and the Widow. Look how free they are. And the Zen, of course. Just you absolutely free. them on their favor. Yeah. yeah. And this is where, if you had like a D.Va instead, you could get away with this. Because D.Va can just fly at either one of these members and just say they don't get to play the game. But because we're limited, we need to be proactive with our positions to get the most value there. Payload is a trap. And when we know they have to force payload, we know we want to force the vulnerable people to touch payload, not just their tanks. Alright, we're coming up on a few ultimates now, but they've got a dragon we got to worry about. Can we find an early kill again? They're playing scared now, they're worried about it. All right, looking to force that uh, brawl. Actually, probably into that. Yeah. A little bit disconnected here. Yeah, I, I, no, I remember this fight. <laughs> fucking, uh, that was that was a just bad engage. Mm -hmm. So but obviously we could have overrun this Orisa on the corner right now. He wasted his shield. We have big advantage. Yeah, the biggest thing is obviously the shield goes up and we're already half HP. Um, just uh, stricter timing on the shield. But like, if we need to, if we want to go for a deep shield, the the order we're going for is like either Sigma. Probably not shift, but you could shift if they're, if they're close range as well. But at the very least, Sigma shield out the door. Arista shield where we want to set up aggressively. Walk into the Arista shield space. Find the halt during the Arista shield engage. And then kill the target. 
Uh, in this case, we could have shielded directly onto the Orisa, blocked the damage with the Sigma Shield. Even if Sigma Shield breaks, it'll be up sooner than Orisa Shield's cooldown, which is absurd in Overwatch 1 still. Uh, and you'll be able to rush this target down. Hopefully, this window will buy this, not window, this shield will buy you enough time to kill the Orisa. And then the Sigma Shift or the Sigma's next shield will help buy you a little bit more time to reposition, maybe find the next target, maybe come back into cover, whatever it calls for. Uh, yeah. But make sure we got that order of that order of events down because there's no reason to take this poke damage when we're the ones pushing on our timing. Unfortunately, our tracer goes down to edge it. Oh, a nice dragon from them too, actually. Yeah, just a little bit mismanagement there, opening the fight. Again, like I said, we know the order. We know how to do this properly. I've seen you do it almost perfectly, so make sure we're able to line up all those cooldowns. We can't get even a microsecond too lazy, otherwise exactly that happens. We eat a headshot unnecessarily. Oh, hurt. <laughs> Speaking of getting lazy... Bit of an optimistic pull, I'll say. <laughs> hey, hey, it worked once. It worked, <laughs> it worked once, yeah. It's I about sending a, a message. Trust. Now we just wait out the bongo. This is fine. Yeah. yeah I don't know what this guy's on. Yeah. Again, I've got a lot of notes for them and their positions, but we're not here to talk about them, so this is all looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that we're just overwhelming. They're giving us the easy way in, which is nice. Very nice of them to donate this space and these wins. Uh, but keep in mind, again, if this doesn't come as obviously, there are other ways, of course. There's ways to play around our tracer position. There's ways to play around our Hanzo Zegels a little bit more flexibly, if we need to. But we had the ultimates. They gave us the kills. So who needs to care about that right now? Uh, I want to see this, uh, the second, this second point kind of hurt my brain a little bit. I like uh, this I don't rotation see, already. I don't see this is smart. any reason. I, I don't see any reason. Why uh, we would be so spread apart right now when everybody started in the same, same position mm -hmm. and have the same speed and got the call at the same time. I think it's literally just, again, our Baptiste and Hanzo thinking about a different win condition, thinking about a different fight. We're thinking about the brawl in our front line here. And I, again, I, I'm not here to hear communication, so I, I don't know exactly what it was. Maybe they just didn't hear the comm. Maybe yeah, they weren't yeah. paying attention. Maybe they were making a separate comm and overlapping communication. Lots of things like that happen in coordinated teams. But you're exactly right. Tracer pushing payload here. Hanzo Baptiste pushing with the core means even if we don't force the brawl right away, it means our Tracer gets a lot of free space. If they try to punish Tracer, she's Tracer. She runs away, and then we get the high ground from them. If they try to meet us here, Tracer gets a bunch of free payload space, and then we can coordinate and engage around the Sigma Flux or the Dragon. Lots of free opportunities here. I like this rotation a lot already. Even though we're a little bit staggered, I yeah. think it makes sense to wait for this engage anyway, unless the Sigma is about to feed. Yeah, again, like, this is good that we're forcing the space. I don't know why they're they're backing up here, honestly. But again, keep in mind that... Me. Yeah, a bit. They, they, they definitely are. Those pulls across the map, killing Hanzo <laughs> and everything. Um, the biggest thing here is forcing this play should also make sense, even though Tracer's not part of this fight, it should make sense for the value Tracer's finding. Tracer here pushing is free value, given that they've all given up space defensively. We could literally just wait on this mega pack and get free rotation here, up to the point where Tracer's yeah. pushing the payload here and then can actually follow the fight as well if she wants to. Um, but we can also force a fight if we think we have the advantage, whether that's because they have a spawners, two spawners coming, or whether they think uh, we don't think they have trance or something like that, or if someone's overextended. We can definitely force this fight. But like, exactly like you said, without our Baptiste and Hanzo here, we don't have necessarily the damage and the healing to keep up with this brawl. So it might be a little bit forced, but we're doing okay. They give up all the space. We're waiting for this tech. Okay. Dragon and Flux used okay. a little bit and missed this. off the... I think... Here, let me go to your Sigma's POV, actually. The, I think he the, wanted the... to get one deeper, but... The call was to do the fox here, but uh, we don't... It's this huh? barrier. He didn't no, want to go... He... <laughs> no, I swear, I swear he just clicked it like a one second too late than his brain intended to. I can see oh, it in his eyes. The other thing though, like, he, I think he's trying to aim right here, but this barrier is blocking his LOS. And if he goes any higher, oh he exposes God. himself above God. the shield and he's scared of getting like rocked or dead here, I think. that That's what he, I'm he just... seeing personally, but it's hard to no. tell. He look at his POV again. Uh, <laughs> he 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 goes down because he wants to avoid the rock and go behind the shield or something. Yeah. Like, he goes behind the shield. <laughs> <laughs> he almost, it, and it he looks flicks. almost intentional the way he flicks down. That's oh unlucky. Oh my god. Well, I mean, whatever, but still shouldn't stack the dragon mm -hmm. when it's not called and also they have chance. And... Yeah. But um, Dragon Flux is a really uh, good combo, actually, but when they have trance, obviously, probably not the play. It's the same as like Grab Dragon. 
It's a good combo uh, when you spread it out, spread out, spread out the value. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, don't have the same power, unfortunately, because we used everything absorbing their initial pull. Yeah. So again, little things to make that better. Obviously, the, co the communication coordination around the alt plays itself. But if we had just waited till the payload was like already right here before we even commit there, then the payload gets like here. Then we still play the exact the same way, except maybe Tracer finds a way to hit someone in the back as they're chasing you guys. And maybe they don't, they're not able to commit as hard because Tracer's distracting them. Maybe we find a reason to turn around during that fight. Maybe we get free payload space even further. Like little advantages like that, even in a losing situation, we should always be playing for as a team. So again, when we're talking about syncing up value, it's all about timing. It's whether that timing is all six of us pushing through a choke together and using a BAP window or a flux or whatever it is, or whether that timing spread out around the map and we're finding space, positions, payload, pressure, angles, whatever our DPS or whoever else is doing, line up that timing whenever we can. It's a small thing here in this case, obviously, uh, but I think it would have helped in the long run. Now we're in a rough spot. Now it's very hard to take space here. We're probably going to look for a similar rotation. We don't have necessarily the ultimates to match yes. up here. We're going to try a window play maybe. Yeah, uh, it was too flat and ready. Ideally, just for min-maxing here, I would love to see the Arisa pull come out first and then the window. Um, the yeah. rule of thumb I always say is anytime we're using an ultimate, in coordinated play, we have like 1.5 seconds max before they've already dealt with that as a threat. They have defensive cooldowns, they give up position, they have an alt in response, they have trance, or they have like a bat lamp that keeps them safe. If we're not getting value in the first 1.5 seconds of this window, it's not going to be a valuable window. It's a very static resource, right? That's what I call an install ultimate. It's something like, uh, I guess, kind of like Nano or Bongo. Once it's out there, people know what it does. So you want the the cast time and the one, first 1. 1.5 seconds of the ultimate to be what finds value because after that, they already know it exists. They're already dealing with it. They're already forgetting about it by the time it's wearing off. So lining up that halt first makes this more of a surprise. Because the yeah. halt is, is worrisome enough, to be honest, especially what we saw on first point. Uh, but the window is what should surprise them, catch them off guard, keep them on the back foot. So definitely want to see that order shifted a little bit just to get more value. This gets okay value. I mean, honestly, in a lot of coordinated play, window is a space creation tool. And this definitely created space, so that's not too bad. Should, should be more forward. Taking space on the cart now. I'm expecting a rotation onto their high ground. Uh, like this is taking so much time for no reason like we're mm -hmm. standing to shoot them in the middle of a rotation again uh, even just the small difference of tracer brig versus genji zen means like the longer we're in this rotation the more value zen's finding the more opportunities genji's finding our tracer isn't like in their back line trying to jump on anyone right now we're not trying to bait this attention for any reason this is just a losing situation not only because they have the high ground but because they have a better spam composition and yeah, exactly like you said, this rotation should happen. This Sigma Shield, and if we're forced to use Arisha Shield, or at worst, if we're forced to use Baptiste Lamp, those are all defensive tools to make sure this rotation happens. If we're not using this Sigma Shield to make this rotation, and we could easily have made this rotation through here uh, as well. I... This is just exactly like you said, a little bit of unnecessary time. Too much focus on, oh, wait, if I break their shield and hit a headshot, someone's dead. Or if I find this pull of someone at the edge, they're dead. Not enough focus on the team play which is, in this case, just a rotation. And unfortunately, Hanzo goes down. Would you get the safe spot? I wanna... This, this, uh, uh, the, the, the lamp needs to come, like, <laughs> earlier here. We win the, we win this fight. Uh, you just... All right, let's see. Like, I think this is perfect aggression. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I expect a lamp, and I expect a lamp here. Like, these guys are dead. Yeah, let me see one more time. Uh, valley up, we got the pool. This guy's... Uh... Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, I don't know if we saw their lamp, and maybe we were trying to like squeeze as much value out of the pause, but yeah, really unlucky timing. Yeah, I think because they still had lamp, this might still be a losing situation, even if we do get this lamp off, because they can just react purely defensively, and then we're still stuck in a choke point here. Um, without like ultimate pressure here, rally isn't really enough, especially considering we're down our Hanzo, and our Tracer's position isn't really valuable enough to do much to break this choke. Maybe a bit too quick. And especially since they have more ultimates as well, ultimate economy is definitely not in our favor here. But if this is a play to just either try and equalize immediately, it should have come faster. If this is a play to try and draw out ultimates from them, the lamp should have definitely come earlier and we should have burned it down targets more aggressively. But I don't think this is a winning fight either way, no matter what we do here, given the alt economy, given the positions, given the Hanzo death. But 
yeah, I agree. Lamp should have been there, but overall, I think this play might have been a little bit eager. The uh, the rally I mean, like, is not a big enough advantage to force this. Is basically what I'm saying. Uh, it's not a big enough advantage to win us the fight there and then, but uh, I think uh, I think us having rally, it's fine for me to work out a choke and either I get two keys or we trade lamps and then I have rally on, so I, mm. we can we can maybe steal a I survive with a lamp and we can maybe steal kite back for the choke uh, and survive inside and they might need to use like two more ults to win this fight yeah I, at the very least hopefully we're so able to kite yeah, back guess, back around like yeah. after, post lamp that kind of thing and then again like at best if they chase us we can turn that but again there's a lot of like what ifs kind of moments there there's like a what if if like what if they drop behind us there's a what if if uh, they pull someone out of position when we're at the choke that's not you as Arissa kind of thing um, definitely I would say optimistic at best and probably one of the situations where if we're using Rally as an attempt to force them to ultimate, that's the best case scenario. But I don't think a situation where we call like a hard engage necessarily. That's where I'd want us in communication to get calling for something like almost to bait their aggression. Ooh, almost at the combo. Again, any time spent. Okay, actually we're on the Zen now, so we do have equal um slightly worse because genji can technically spam but basically equal spam advantage here and interestingly enough i don't know if you guys practice this often but in the double shield mirror attackers with similar range damage will always have the advantage do you know why that is i mean you cannot choose when to pick a... exactly the timing is up to the attackers right you choose when the arisa shield goes up this arisa shield's already been up you can walk forward with your Sigma shield. You can put up your, you can go for this halt play as you're putting up your shield. You can spam damage into the shield, even if you're not killing the halted people. You will always get the meaningful damage in at your timing if you're playing well. This is something that's developed in the Overwatch League when everyone was playing double shield for a while. And I remember so many fights on just Temple of Anubis first point where attackers would just bowl over defenders because they just, they did the thing where they shoot an Arisa shield up in the air and then they don't have it for the attacker's timing. And that's very, very exploitable, but it's something we need to play for. If that's something we're playing for here, I would, let, I would have liked to see stricter timing. So let's just, again, look back at our timing here. Shield comes up. You're the only one shooting. Yeah. Pull comes out. Now we've got the Zen right click. Now the Sigma shield's kind of overlapping with our shield. Our targets are already reacting to the pull. But now they they're reacting with their own shields. Shield. Yeah, now they've got their own Arisa shield and Sigma shield coming back up. And we've already missed our opportunity here. So... Even though it's um, literal mi milliseconds we're talking about here, but we need to have that discipline to line um, up uh, with the pull timing. We have storm arrows, we have rock, we have right click from Zen, all at the same time. If we're lucky, maybe we even have a tracer pulse bomb coming in from behind them, that kind of thing. That should so, always wait, wait, wait. be there every time, no excuse. What do you mean we missed our opportunity here? Uh, I mean, uh, what I'm what I'm saying is uh, we could get we could have gotten more value than from my shield up time because uh, not mm -hmm. everybody was speaking while it was uh, up, but. Uh, we got people shooting the pool. Okay. Again, uh, the pull, because the pull was already, like, we were they, already spamming the shield down yeah. after the pull comes out. Like, either this pull keeps them in place and the shield breaks immediately and we kill them post pull with this rock, in which case we would change our Sigma rock timing slightly. Or we're going with the intention of breaking shield first and then pulling. Or we're going with the intention of pulling above shield and killing them. I think we went with the intention of pulling above shield and killing them, and in which case we just kind of missed our shots, unfortunately with the, yeah. the bull timing like you can Could see I like the shots landing up, as they're landing it just it's, it's not on you as Arissa, i would say it's just a team dynamic thing of being immediately ready for this bull timing and exactly like i said like your shield's already down and we didn't get enough value that's the problem yeah okay just, yeah, just wanted to make sure what you it's it's very very small and i would say this isn't something you guys would need to focus on as a team it's not that important it's not the game changing element of these team fights or anything like that but it is something to consider if it's something you're trying to brute force. And since we don't have any ultimates to use, maybe it is something worth brute forcing, but we need to be very, very, very clean with it. It's, uh, it's honestly pretty game-changing. You more follow up on that pull, we get the lamp out, and then the pull pulse uh, is insta-win. Oh, it's kind of an insta-win anyway. <laughs> it's an insta-win, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. That was actually really good uh, follow-up. Did, that, did the, uh, What killed the lamp? Uh, does... uh, well... Okay, but the lamp just was too slow, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that was the plan, to pick once to bait some mm -hmm. cooldowns, then go for a pull pulse uh, to make them unpick, and then we can rotate in for a bongo. But I mean, we just won with the pulse. So. Yeah, and they forced an equalization play there. That's not going to get them anything, unfortunately, for them. 
Oh, it was very big brain. Also, these yeah. two teammates were very good as well. Ooh. Okay. Amazing. Optimistic. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, if they are trying to lose, just for reference for I, what I assume is going through their minds, this is, again, them banking on way too much individual value without anything to relieve pressure off of them. Uh, and these are equalization plays that, in theory, can work, but are very, very, very optimistic. This is what I call, like, a hero play. I'm sure you've heard that term before or something similar. And they are very few and far between in disciplined, well-coordinated Overwatch. And the more you force plays like that, the less you rely on team pressure and the less you rely on actual, like, good macro and communication plays and synergy yeah. and things like that. All right, snowballing space here. Again, because we have these early kills, we can try and snowball space here, but we need to work together. Sigma playing for space I mean, here should be off of you and Sigma playing for space. Should be off you and Sigma playing for space that Hanzo capitalizes on, that Zen capitalizes on. Granted, Zen had a death, so he's not going to be there, but this is uh, not uh, a solo We are just getting called that he's alone here right now and that our mm -hmm. map is dead and he didn't really realize that before he pushed it. For sure, yeah. A big thing here too, the only reason for Sig to split from your Orisa at this moment would be to get an aggressive angle for Hanzo, I would say. There's nothing Sig does from this position, realistically. Um, and the only time Sig would want to split is either to relieve pressure from Marissa, who's not currently pushing, or to create an aggressive angle opportunity. This is not Sigma this is not something Sigma does solo in this composition. So notes for your Sigma player, I like the aggressive opportunity, but you understand you need to understand what the aggression is for. What that space is for is not necessarily you all the time. Very rarely you, I would say. It's for either your main tank or for one of your ranged DPS. Zen could be considered a ranged DPS as well for, for those reasonings. Same goes Watch for this. Go, you here? Um, I'll finish out this uh, attack, but I will probably have to wrap up after that, unless there's something very specific you wanted to look at right now. Oh, I was I wanted to look at the first point defense okay. here, like uh, the next one we did. But, uh, All right, here I'll I'll fast forward through this. If there's anything crazy, I'll bring it up. But otherwise, sure. you do mention you cap out the map, so I'm expecting a bit of a snowball. Yeah. Here. yeah. Really good positioning, forward positioning here. Keep going out of bounds, my bad. Good reaction, defense. Again, just like playing against the dive, you can think of ultimate economy in the same way. They have a power spike when they're ulting, we have power spikes when we're ulting, as long as we play defensively during their power spikes and we don't die, then we can re-engage post their ultimate value and come back in. We showed that oh, by Jesus, giving us space. On this step. A lot of overlapping ults with Dragon. It seems like we don't know how to use Dragon proactively a little bit. We're trying to combo with ultimate value, which is not bad, uh, but it seems like a bit of a reliance rather than either using it as a follow-up after that play. So what I mean by that here, let me just go back just briefly to talk about this. This Dragon play... Uh, did I miss it already? Uh, I missed it. Going too bad. So this Dragon yeah, play yeah, is finding the same value as this window, right? Which obviously is both are being nullified by Trance. And this is okay. But I would, ra and it's a good way of like overwhelming again, but I would like to see more creative uses where either using the back window and then the dragon after this trance has expired, or using dragon in a way that complements the back window. So it, like they're running away from the back window and then they get dragoned, something like that. This, this is a bit of an awkward space to try and communicate this, this concept, but this overlap, whether it's with the Sigma, like we said before, it's a base, it's best used when the Sigma is like when they're about to land and they're forced to use lamp or something like that. Then you have the dragon to finish them off as you're breaking the lamp kind of thing. Um, rather than layering, stacking them, you want to layer them. And that's if you're throwing up to the same direction. If you are stacking them, make sure they complement each other a little bit better here. Just like you would complement like a, I don't know, a soldier and a Hanzo, you would want them to have complementing angles. You want to have cross angle, crossfire. Uh, you wouldn't want them stacking in the same position, shooting from the same direction. It's a lot more predictable, it's a lot easier to mitigate, especially with defensive ultimates like Trance, and it's harder to find consistent value in. But yeah, we get the really good snowball. Like I said, that early positioning here on the spinner basically won us that whole alt economy trade, and then we had the ultimates to close out, and they did not. Oh, the Doomfist is a little bit scary, but we closed it out. Nice job. <laughs> Doomfist, man. <laughs> All right, let's skip ahead a little bit. All right, so you want to look at our defense, right? Not our attack. Yeah, we defended the. Uh, we, we, I, we just lost the nonsense. Okay. It's... Early spam here is fine. Again, okay, we are in the Zen now, so we do have equal spam advantage. So this is fine. Basically, just trading shields 
for time. So this is okay. First of all, all all of our uh, I mean I watched it like uh, for myself. So I already have like my things in it, but it's like uh, we shouldn't have the whole team fucking yeah. rotate to in with me like uh, <laughs> sub we're supposed to be holding mostly the left lane and the middle. I guess I can pick I can pick this corner, but like not much else. We need more support on our Sigma. Because right now, our Sigma is going to get fucked here. He's going to need to give them the left lane. Uh, you, you will see it in a second. Mm -hmm. Also, these guys just die for to a good pull. These guys just die or for stun. Oh. This is a very ex exposed position. So yeah, but best situation here. So, um, And I'll try to present this in a way that doesn't just apply to Junkertown. Because um, a lot of maps play out very similar to this. It's very obvious on Junkertown because of how wide and open it is. But this is what we call a three lane setup, right? At best, you want to be able to control and threaten two lanes with any defensive hold. Um, when you're trying to threaten all three lanes, you're almost guaranteed to split yourselves thin as defenders. On this map, you actually kind of can because a Widowmaker, for example, back here can threaten all three lanes and stuff like that. But, or a Hanzo in, in this case, or a Zen in this case as well. But for the most part, we're looking to control two lanes while we have an option to react to them taking the third lane. So for example here, if we see their Sig, Han Sig, Hanzo, and Genji holding this lane, it's not that we need to fight them here, but it's that because we can threaten this other lane, we can rotate and brawl them on point, like we did on our first fight last defense. Because we're all holding in one lane, Sig isn't really capitalizing on this lane, we're not really holding this lane, so he's forced to give up, and because we're so telegraphed here, they are playing a safer position, they're able to capitalize on this faster. We're not actually threatening two lanes here, and our defensive hold is too linear. That being said as well, uh, I don't like our initial position on the ground too much. I think dropping to the ground to hold the cart here is absolutely fine. I think dropping to the ground to start a brawl here or trying to bait people into a pull here is all fine. But I don't think there's a reason to start on the ground when we're already, when we're still in like the range battle. I would like to see you on the high ground here. This What it does mostly is just gives you natural cover so you can rely on your shield less, maybe save it for a more aggressive shield cooldown. And it gives Bap and Zen a safer position to play uh, up here on these stairs which also enables like a faster rotation into these brawls that we like without being exposed to unnecessary like widow angles or Hanzo angles in this case. So I can already see where you already mentioned where this goes wrong. We just completely give up control here. Like I said, this is what we wanted to do after we killed the Zen. We want to corral them like sheep into a small zone. They're already yeah. doing that because we're already there. We've already walked into our pen by ourselves and then it's a free collapse by them. Now they're the ones in control of two lanes instead of us. Yeah, Sigma, even just the fact that we force shift there and we're not able to do anything in response. Like normally Sigma shift is a great for buying time, right? It's one of the best kiting tools in the game, unless it gets interrupted, of course. So using shift here and not being able to release pressure by pushing this way is already like such a disadvantage for our composition. Like I said before, if we're not able to, when we were um, holding up here and they ended up trancing and we were to the ground, if we can't immediately equalize, we need to buy a lot of time. So right here, because we're not able to immediately equalize, even though no one's dying, we're not immediately able to immediately equalize off these defensive resources used by going aggressive here or by uh, stacking up and counter-aggressing here. We need to play for time in this case. And the best case I can see from this situation is if we kite for space here, their Orisa won't be able to do much because she's still pushing cart. We can keep our Bab Zen alive for longer. It'll be hard to chase them down here. And then our Tracer can either contest cart or go for a 1v1 if the Orisa walks up and we can maybe find the Baptiste. That would be, I think, best case scenario. Uh, that, or, you know, sometimes we just find a kill. So let's see what happens here. So their Genji ends up overextending, and for some reason, they just completely give up. So that also works. But that was a very bad situation to be in. That was a very punishable yeah. situation for their Sigma and Hanzo to potentially find a kill rather than just force a little bit of space. And we never want to give up that opportunity first as defenders. This is valid engage. Now, now I. I I should just get clamped here. <laughs> and we should be paying attention to this lane because I'm calling this and we know this is happening. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, people are like focused on their personal values. So we have like... Again, e the, my biggest fear here is even with all six of us rotating here, we don't have our pull. We don't have our Orisa shield. We don't have a reason that this person becomes more vulnerable than just their position gives away. Which again, Sig is one of the best kiting tanks in the entire game, if not the best, I guess ball for himself would be the best kiter uh but sigma can absorb a ton of pressure and this is a situation course, where they would be able to this. equalize here but yeah i i definitely think we shouldn't be 
I don't I don't know what the best case scenario here is. I think either we try to ignore the Sig by rotating forward. Again, we could almost like force a brawl here onto these members now that we see Sig and Hanzo being on this flank here. But if we're going to call the push the Sigma here aggressively, we need your tanking resources. We have Fortify, sure, but we don't have the reasons yeah. to make these people more vulnerable than they currently are. And again, the split is the worst thing out of anything. Yeah. They're just playing it out. Like Hanzo would die there, I would leave. The Sigma doesn't have cooldowns, we can fight mm -hmm. the main now. Yeah, like you said, it's it's mainly the disconnect, and I don't know if that's a communication issue, I don't know if that's just an attention issue, listening to comms, listening and communicating themselves are both communication issues at their core, uh, and we just end up folding, unfortunately. This is what you wanted to look at primarily, I'm assuming? Yeah, just how everybody's, like, too focused in their own screens. Yeah, like, uh... and honestly, without hearing communication, I could say the same of you here, because the option to push them out back here was A+. plus. And then you could have like used this as natural cover even without your own personal resources the option to turn around here without knowing that you have the safety of lamp or without seeing yourself get healed or without seeing like a sigma shield in front of you that's where that over aggression steps in and because you're right in a Wait, perfect sorry. world we're, we're all what? in each other so here let me go back you did you did push them off the corner here really effectively but then you opted to turn the corner as well okay. right here this here, if you just dip into natural cover here, you've done exactly what you were trying to do. It won't get you a kill, but at the very least, it keeps you alive. And as you can see, like this split, like you said, it, this is the biggest problem. And I can't say, as a matter of fact, whose problem it is necessarily as yeah, a, at an okay. individual level. I, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like I, right here. Just, <laughs> I, I don't think I should be like, okay, I get what you mean, but I also don't think I should be compensating, like, like proactively compensating for mistakes that shouldn't exist in the first place. Like so if this is the move, then this is the move. Like we shouldn't have my like my my Beb shouldn't be shooting the Orisa down main if this is the call and we know that this is happening. So there's there's two schools of thought here. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from. And yeah, on paper, this is the correct play, right? And you're absolutely right. And on paper, the lamp lands, we kill Hanzo, and this is the winning situation that we need to full hold them here on first. In reality, and I say this more often to people playing in ranked games than I do in coordinated settings, unfortunately. Um, but on, the reality is, and especially on match day, things go wrong in a game of Overwatch. Whether that's people getting split in terms of their attention, Oops. whether that's resources not landing on time in terms of this lamp, whether that's shots not landing, and even if you got lamped here, like maybe you think you should hit the Hanzo, but Sigma just body blocks everything and then he kills you anyway kind of thing. Lots of things can potentially go wrong here. And sometimes playing for what is what like the worst case scenario also makes sense so in a situation like this depending on again like, the main thing i don't have unfortunately is communication and i haven't worked with you guys very much as a team so i don't really know what your team structure is like i can't say with 100 percent certainty like what the problem is here because of these factors but the biggest thing i would say for you personally as a player here is you had everything within your own control to not die here and that's way more important than getting this early pick on hanzo so outside of that, you're absolutely right. In a perfect world, if we had perfect coordination, and we should be striving for <laughs> yeah. perfect coordination, you're absolutely right. But this is a match day. This is this is a high pressure situation. It's way more important for you to live here. And I could say the same for this tracer. Like it's way more important for your tracer to live here or not get. Okay, well she did live. Uh, but like if she died going for that kill on Zen, that's a much that's a huge forced play that she doesn't need to make. That doesn't make sense in terms of the team setting. This was not as huge of a play. And you're right that you should have had the support that you needed here to make that play work. But we're dealing with humans, not robots, unfortunately. Uh, we, we can expect some margin of error in every situation we go into. It's about making sure that we're ready for any situation and we have the control to make sure that we can exercise our options in those situations, not just go all in on what we think makes the most sense. There's so many barriers of entry for playing coordinate Overwatch. There's, at the very least, five other people on your team who might have different ideas, different reaction times, different focuses at any moment. And... In a lot of situations, I think that third point fight where your BAP, and, uh, your BAP and Hanzo got split by the ball is a great example of even though, yes, they should have followed the call, it's very possible that even with the right mindset, they get disrupted by the ball and something goes wrong and you still lose that fight despite having perfect coordination, you know? So, yeah. yes, I agree with you. You should have been the, uh, you should have had the go-ahead to go aggressive there, but I do want you to more than anything i don't want you to get too tilted at your teammates uh, in these kind of situations because there is so much that can go wrong and there's so much margin of error especially on a performance day that it's not worth like dwelling on these things 
I think everyone understands and being able to see this from a third person perspective, how obvious it is that this was a capitalizable or that's not a word. This was a situation which you could capitalize on, but at the same time, you need to have a little bit of restraint in yourself. You need to be able to play for the moments for the consistent levels, not just the immediate peak performance levels. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I know it, it sucks to hear. <laughs> I no, know it, it's, I, it's, it's I, not good. I, it doesn't I, feel like, good. I, 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 know, uh, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's just, uh, it's like, I, I, it's like kind of whatever, like I'm, I just played the OD before. Mm -hmm uh these guys you know i'm like i'm here to like uh, help a little bit here and there and so i will like, say see, i'll say i will know. give you a pass okay if this happens <laughs> if anything like this happens in scrims get on your teammates asses because there's no excuse for this in match day you have to roll with the punches you have to just deal with it uh <laughs> of course i i mean even in the uh, i don't I, i'm not the, the guy to uh tilt and yell and cry yeah yeah, I, again, like, I'm, I just, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. there's so many factors here that I can't, like, address all of them, but the biggest thing is, like, there's always ways for everyone to improve in every situation, yourself included, obviously, in this one, specifically, um, but yeah, you're right in a lot of ways, but there's so, there's so many reasons the right thing doesn't always work in Overwatch, is, I guess, my main argument, which sucks, is annoying, uh, but that's what happens when you're playing with human beings instead of AI. Um, but yeah, if, okay. if there's, any other moments or questions this would be a good time but otherwise i think i'll be wrapping up the review here i think we covered a lot i think there was a lot already in this composition that i think you guys can improve on obviously a lot of unlucky situations obviously in this match in terms of disconnect from your teammates and stuff like that between the front line and the back line um those aren't easy fixes unfortunately my best advice is to stay on each other's asses like keep each other accountable yes it's important for you to be leading the team as a frontline, but you also need to be ready to hear criticism from your backline for reasons in which they couldn't follow the comm or for reasons in which they were unable to hear the comm. That's maybe not as realistic, but there's there's plenty of reasons this yeah. game. So make sure you're staying flexible and trying to adapt to them as well. If they can't keep up with you, that's just as much of a problem as you going